some time out of your day today, and I have argued in the past couple of days on my show in Raleigh that I think the ACC got cheated a little bit by the fact that Tara Vanderveer decided to retire before she joined the ACC. Oh, for sure. Uh, that was a little disappointing to hear yesterday. Tara's a legend um, and, and one of the greatest of all time, one of the greatest coaches of all time, three national championships, over 1,200 wins. There was a little part of me that thought, look, she's been in the Pac-12 her whole career. She's on the tail end of her career. She's losing Cam Brink to the WNBA draft. Is she going to want to travel to Winston-Salem on a Thursday night? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> so I did have that in the back of my mind, but, you know, she hadn't said anything, and so we really weren't sure. But So it kind of makes sense when you look at it from that perspective. She did have a quote saying, you know, part of me wanted to stay and, and compete in the ACC because it is the best women's basketball conference in the country, but I think it was probably just time for her, and so I understand it. I totally get it, but you're right definitely a bummer as for me personally too as someone who covers the ACC Stanford Cal SMU the newest members of the ACC coming next year trying to put a bow on this past season with us here Kelly and it, it clearly again it's been more about the exposure about the women's game this season than more before and uh, I just got done talking about golf creating unicorns and whatnot and how they're having the challenges with the more exposure of the women's game the unicorns have kind of come to the front to where it's almost unfair to call a lot of these players obviously Caitlin Clark is is the prime example Angel Reese had a lot of that love last year but you just remember you just mentioned you just mentioned Cam Brink. We have you know J.C. Sheldon out of Ohio State, uh, Alyssa Peely of Utah, uh, Aaliyah Edwards at UConn. Right? I mean, the, this list goes on and on and on to where more and more of these women are becoming household names and are able to turn that into you know not just exposure for the sport, but all of a sudden they find themselves being the newest and maybe freshest ambassadors to maybe take the professional game in the United States to a new level. Yes, they do. And there's a lot of big names entering the WNBA this class. I mean, you could argue this is the biggest class and kind of the the class with the most star power that we've ever seen. Um, I go back to, I believe it was 2013 when you had Griner, um, Elena Deladon, and Skylar Diggins. That was a really big class. But this one, I think with Caitlin Clark, it, it's going to be unparalleled, you know, I, and we talk, I know you were mentioning it with, with golf and the whole drama with golf on, constantly is who's the next tiger, right? Who's the next tiger. And there, there will probably never be another tiger, but for women's basketball, I think Caitlin Clark is the tiger in, in a lot of respects. Um, she's someone who's going to take the sport to new heights, heights that we've never seen before. She's a winner. She's phenomenal. Um, she plays the game in a different way. Like, I, I think it's a, it's a fair comparison. And then you're seeing the ratings, right? Golf really took off from a ratings perspective once Tiger started doing his thing. And we're seeing ratings that are just flat out unbelievable. To go from 5 million people watching the national title two years ago to this year, 18.7 million, it's, it's just hard to fathom. And, yes, part of it is – just the growth of the game and the exposure, and I totally agree with you on that. But part of it is Caitlin Clark, and she's just – she's un- unreal. Um, and I think you're, we're going to see ratings records broken in the W as well. And it will be because the sport is growing and all that, but it will also be because of Caitlin Clark. ACC Network College Basketball Analyst Kelly Gramlich joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. I am Paul Eihander. As we put a little bit of a bow on the college basketball season, we saw Kenny Brooks at Virginia Tech, specifically to the ACC, leave to go to Kentucky. Megan Duffy slides into the Virginia Tech spot. Kenny Brooks was willing to go to Kentucky, but it seems like on the men's side, no one seems to want that job, at least initially. <laughs> what What is the issue with Kentucky? Why did Kenny Brooks say yes, but why is Scott Drew saying no? That's a great question. You know, I think for Kenny Brooks, and I, I know Kenny well, and I think the world of him, I think what he did at Virginia Tech is remarkable. Um, I think he just kind of wanted a new challenge. And in women's basketball specifically, you know, we talk about this with football and with men's basketball of who has the NIL, that kind of thing. Well, even your middle-of-the-pack NIL funds for football and men's basketball are still pretty high your middle-of-the-pack NIL funds for women's basketball compared to your top NIL funds, there's a big difference. And so I I believe, I don't know for sure, but I believe he was going to have more NIL money at Kentucky 
Um, and of course, Liz Kitley was graduating and moving on, who has built that program with him. Georgia Amor followed him. So I think that's part of it. And then Kentucky just built a brand new women's only basketball facility, which is going to be very exciting. Seems like there's a lot of money being put in there. So I think it was, a lot of it was about money and resources. When it comes to the men's side, I view the Kentucky men's job kind of similarly to the Tennessee women's job, which Tennessee, um, from the reporting I've seen, their top three candidates all turned them down. Because at Tennessee, you get fired for going to the Sweet 16. Right. At Kentucky, you know, you get fired for, I know they lost in the first round, but you get fired for a really good season. So I think that's part of it. And then you're also seeing coaches who have been able to carve out success at a certain spot that are just happy there. I mean, I think we've, We've all come to realize that if you have the support of the administration and you have adequate funds, you know, maybe making a million more dollars just isn't really worth it, especially in this climate. So there's a lot going into it. But I I think the Tennessee women's situation, if you want to look at it through that lens, it's kind of similar to the Kentucky men. ACC Network College Basketball Analyst and also for ESPN, Kelly Gramlich, joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. I want to ask you about what's happening with the transfer portal. Clearly, it's it's always going to be uh, something that will have to crop up, especially in the offseason moving forward, and certainly with NIL opportunities that you just mentioned. At North Carolina, Courtney Banghart has lost roughly half of her team. If you have her ear right now and you can grab her by the ear, what do you need to tell her to get things going again? Oh, man, well... I, I wouldn't tell anybody how to do their job in this transfer portal <laughs> era because it seems awful, frankly. I mean, just to go back to your example, we had Calipari take the Arkansas job and he said, I met with the team, there is no team, which is just crazy. I mean, that, you know, it used to be you, you took a new job and you had a roster. Maybe it wasn't the talent level you wanted because you're trying to rebuild, but you at least had players. And I think what we're seeing with UNC, you know, you had some people that had some injuries that I think when you've been injured multiple times, you're probably not happy where you are just because of that mainly. Um, so you had a player like Paulina Paris leave and go to Arizona and some other players like that, a key who'd been injured her whole career basically. But Deja Kelly, Alyssa Usby, um, and Usby's not in the portal. I, I, I think Usby will come back. I haven't heard that announced, but I think she will. And then Deja Kelly in the portal, I think we're just seeing that, right? We're seeing, okay, I've spent four years here. I would be going pro in any other situation. But because I have this COVID year, maybe I'll take a look around and see what's out there. I can very much understand that. A few of the other ones, you know, I think you're just going to have some attrition. But, yeah, it does seem to be an issue. And UNC, I thought they really underachieved this year. They are so talented. I thought that roster was so talented. And forever, for whatever reason, I don't know – you know, about the internal workings, but I felt like they underachieved, and so maybe some players just looking for a fresh start. But I know she's bringing in a good class. She's been recruiting like crazy. I guess the main thing I would tell her would be make sure you keep Alyssa Usby and do your best to keep Deja Kelly. That, I, that would be my advice, but I, I'm sure she doesn't need my advice. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about coaching in this transfer portal world. Well, I asked, and you answered, and I appreciate that. ACC <laughs> Network College Basketball Analyst Kelly Gramlich. Kelly, before I let you go, uh, Wes Moore and the uh, Wolfpack women, their chances of running it back next year, uh, sweet, si- sweet 16 and deeper. Um, sweet 16, I, I would say a good chance, you know, because they bring back Tanaya Rivers and Isaiah James, who I think will end up being one of the best backcourts in the country next season. It really depends what they do um, inside. I know they have some young post players they're excited about. They also bring in Zam Jones, who's a big time McDonald's All American, but she's a guard. So, how can they replenish their front court, losing Baldwin and Mimi Collins? They have the guard play, but they just need, and they don't necessarily need superstars in that inside but they need some solid post players so whether that's their young players or the portal but if they get that then definitely i think nc state bare minimum their expectations every year should be the sweet 16 with the program that westmore has built and then if you get hot and you get a good draw you have what happened this year with the final four but just so impressed with westmore and what he's built there at nc state Um, and i'm glad he's staying at nc state i thought perhaps tennessee was gonna come calling and, and maybe talk to him but sounds like he is good to go to stay in Raleigh, and I think that's good news for everybody. Kelly, appreciate the insight as always. Uh, Have a a great spring. Enjoy a little bit of the time off, even though, you know, it really never ends, does it? No, it doesn't, but thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. ACC Network and ESPN College Basketball Analyst Kelly Gramlich here on the Adam Gold Show. Always good to get some insight, and there's the bow.
on the college basketball season on the women's side. Coming up next, folks, we'll have a few one-timers. Adam Gold Show, stick around. Going beyond the box scores, Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Fair housing is more than just a celebration in April. For North Carolina's realtors, it's an everyday standard. For the 56,000 realtors across our state, we embrace and support fair housing to stamp out discrimination in all forms. As realtors, we believe fairness is worth fighting for, and we won't stop until the fight is won. Celebrating Fair Housing Month, North Carolina Realtors. We open doors to everyone. Paid for by North Carolina Realtors. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Adam Gold here, and right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you make your first $5 wager because you know me. FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up. FanDuel.com, promo code AGS. To sign up, then you can bet on anything. Slap shots, home runs, slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. $200 in bonus bets await when you place your first $5 wager. Visit FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to get started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Bonus is issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Everyone goes through tough times, and everyone can get through them, as long as they don't have to do it alone. Dial 988 if you need someone to talk to. Get what you need to get to a better place. Together, we'll find the care that works best for you. We're here 24-7. Call, text, or chat 988. 988. Let's get through it together. Brought to you by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Trust ACT Construction Equipment and Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders to position your tree service for success. ACT Construction Equipment is your authorized dealer for sales, service, parts, and rentals for Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders. ACT Construction Equipment has been your authorized dealer for Bandit Equipment for over 10 years. Visit one of our six North and South Carolina locations or actce.com for more details on Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders. ACT Construction equipment always the right equipment for the job it's the first day of the first grade and she found a new best friend it's a layback sunday afternoon you wish would never end the homemade taste of bluebell and good friends gathered round the good old days are being made right now St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream, a cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days are being Look for Blue Bell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. Your background may not include agriculture, but two years at the Agricultural Institute will prepare you for a career in it. Whether you are a military veteran with an arsenal of skills, kickstarting your second career, or about to graduate high school, the Agricultural Institute at NC State University is the right place for you. Nurture your passion and find your career. Learn more about our program online by searching NC State Ag Institute. Deadline for fall enrollment is June 1st. Two years, one degree, enlist possibilities. This is Adam Gold. If the kids want to get on the floor, they're going to get on the floor. They'll find a way. There are too many ways to get on the floor. Yeah, and they've been drinking liquid courage all day. <laughs> and that, that is very Sorry. possible. But only the ones that are old enough. Only the older that. ones, yes. So, the Adam Gold Show. There you go. A little energy for your afternoon. Paul Weihander in for Adam Gold today. Yeah, a little spell. Um, 
I was jotting, jotting down some of the bets for the Place Your Bet segment coming up. I'm trying to stay away from golf because a lot of it has mm. to do with live action in the Masters right now. Yeah. So I did a lot of my pre-betting on the Masters. Nice. So yes. I've got I got a few names that I like. Uh, for those of you who are trying to make sense of what is happening today, uh, there is a player. Uh, it's his third Masters appearance. His name is Luke List. I only bring up Luke List's name because if you did any sort of, as I like to say, uh, pre-juicing uh, your 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 sports betting. If you're into that, uh, he is plus four right now through six holes. Oh, he is he is uh, as Joe Namath once said in an interview with Susie Colbert, struggling. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, top top of the bit. top of the leaderboard for the Masters right now. Bryson DeChambeau at minus three, and Eric Von Ruyen, who was part of the first two to uh, to 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 uh, tee off today because of the rain delayed masters he's also at minus 3 and he has played 9 holes so it has actually taken them a little bit longer to get around the course which if you caught the beginning portion of the program because of the weather delay it has pushed a ton of tee times late especially for those of you following some of the locals involved and for those of you who are truly interested in what tiger woods is up to also, Jordan Spieth. Tiger Woods is not supposed to tee off until roughly 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, at a pace of four hours, just roughly say four hours, and everyone's just stroking it as best as they possibly can, mm -hmm. uh, they will be finishing in the dark. Uh, they do not play golf in the dark. It's very difficult. Nope. Having tried to do that before in Hawaii once because I was too cheap to pay for a full round of golf <laughs> starting at 1 o'clock instead of at 2 o'clock, uh, you... You cram it in. Now, I managed to cram a, a cram around in with, with three other strangers in roughly th four and a half hours, but we were finishing at dusk dusk. Right. At the Masters, there will not be any dusk playing. They will pull them off uh, the course, which means for a guy like Tiger Woods, who says his back hurts every time he goes out there, mm -hmm. uh, he will not be finishing all 18 holes today. He will be part of uh, uh, playing a little bit of breakfast ball tomorrow morning in Augusta because the weather is supposed to be nicer as opposed to today and certainly around many parts of North Carolina today it is not the nicest. It's gross, yeah. It no, is... I looked it up. It's actually 745 right now is the current sunset. Okay, But okay. if it's cloudy, you know, that's a little earlier. It's not going to be as bright, so, yeah. yeah. Maybe Tiger gets to finish, maybe? I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure I want to be hitting the island hole right. at dusk. <laughs> right. Like, how far is that again? I'm like, nah, we'll wait for the sun to come back Full out. muscle memory. <laughs> All right. Do we have some one-timers? Yes. All right. All right. Okay, so I have all different kinds of one-timers. Uh, if we have time, we'll change it up. But since we're sticking with golf right now, the Masters this year, um, is there a golfer that you feel maybe is sticking out in your brain that might excel this year? Maybe just some from past, you know, uh, tournaments they've done. But is there one that really sticks out as like, I got a good feeling about this one? Yes, I do, actually. I do, and I'm glad you brought it up. Nice. Victoria, I am a big fan of Wyndham Clark. Oh yeah, Wyndham Clark, who could use, uh, who has twenty top ten finishes in his entire career, has three top tens this year, which means he's playing some pretty good golf. Also, Wyndham Clark happens to be a graduate of the University of Oregon. Oh, there you so go. So it all kind of comes <laughs> together just a little bit. Plus, he has a win this year as well. So between the win, between the top uh, 20, between the three top 10 finishes, uh, he is rolling for me. Now, he has not hopped on the course yet at the Masters. I'm a fan of Wyndham Clark. I yeah. will just put that one out there right away. Don't let me down, Wyndham. Don't let <laughs> yeah. me down. I know. Oregon fans align. Let's go. I love it. Uh, so we also did talk about Tiger today. And, you know, he's been on the struggle bus after five surgeries and a really bad accident. So what do you think potentially his uh, ceiling oh, might be? Ceiling for Tiger Woods. Yes. I think Tiger Woods' ceiling is is a make-the-cut kind of play and probably top 20. Okay. Top 20 for Tiger. He says he's feeling, he's in shape, he says he's ready to go. He also believes he can win it. Yeah. He thinks he can win it, and I'm okay with that. That's a good mentality to have. The only thing I have is 
his schedule's already been thrown off. Yeah. Because of the weather, he's now rolling out an extra hour and a half later than he expected, maybe even two hours. There, There's no footage of him right now on the practice range. Like, it's John Rom right now who's going to go in a bit. That's who I'm seeing on the practice range. Not Tiger Woods yet. Yeah. So, Tiger, again, I think he makes the cut. I think he's a top 20 guy. I won't count him out. Five Masters, Green Jackets. I'm like, I'm sure he would like to add another one to his collection. As we talked about earlier, I would just like him to finish all four rounds as opposed to taking home the jacket. It's okay. He still gets the dinner invite no matter what mm-hmm. as, a, as a prior champion. He still gets to be there. But I think for him to perform at his top level, I don't think we need to be expecting the Cinderella story from Tiger today. I think what I would like to see from him is roll out, pick a couple of – Get a couple of early wins. Grab a couple of early pars. Make sure he settles in. And then just try to stay in contention more yeah. than anything else. There are golfers right out out there right now that are probably going to scorch it up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he's in scorcher mode just yet, but you never count Tiger out. Yeah, you can't, Tiger, you can't count Tiger out. Now, if he did make it all, all the way to the end, which I hope he does too, just the, like, old school i just sunday see red it happen. i know sunday red victoria i just want to see it happen now if he does actually make it how far do you think he should keep pushing himself because i don't really see him winning it all again should he go out in a fizzle should he like okay i've reached my limit so i'm just gonna this is gonna be it for me what do you think tiger should do in this situation oh, victoria what <laughs> happens when you take that first bite of chocolate cake that you've been waiting all day to eat, right? I know. You want another bite. Yeah, you, you want scratch another that bite. mosquito itch. Correct. Like the bite. Because oh. it feels so good. I think for <laughs> Tiger Woods, if he manages to run the table at the Masters and gets his sixth green jacket, yeah. then I don't think there's any stopping him because he'll be at that elite level that we all hope he's at, but realistically we think he needs to work back to. Again, yeah. Tiger Woods or Eldrick Woods, which one are you today? think for Tiger, again, the mentality is proper form. I think he keeps driving to it. But, again, the Champions Tour looms, right? Mm-hmm. That looms. And the other question comes along with Tiger Woods is, is that does he want to play alongside his son? Not in one of those charity, fun, moment kind of things where they're just kind of chopping it up and hitting balls, but to where Charlie Woods is paired with with Eldrick Tiger Woods in an actual event where they play head-to-head against each other. I think that is Tiger's ultimate goal. We talk about LeBron James, right? LeBron James is out there talking about, hey, I would love to play at the same time my son is playing, Bronny James. We've seen it in the major leagues. Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. both played at the same time in baseball's major leagues. I think Tiger would love to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. It will take some winning on Tiger's part to make sure that happens because sometimes the drive may just go away and you get a little bit more real with yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happens, again, as you get older, and I can speak to this personally, you get a little bit more real with yourself. Yeah. Well, and what's the equivalent to puck luck for golf? He need, he might need a little of that, too. <laughs> right, <laughs> Golf luck, but... <laughs> right, deep, deep snakes from way downtown. Yeah, exactly. So, last one about the Masters. With the weather postponing everything, how much do you think that's going to impact maybe the mentality of some of these golfers who might psych themselves up, getting ready, and then, okay, now we've got to chill out and ramp ourselves back up later? Right, well, when you expect nice weather, you expect golf, right? Golf comes with nice weather. It's the way it is. You can deal with the wind, but I want blue sky i want to be able to see things and and enjoy the moment as opposed to having to wear an extra layer of clothing if i wanted to wear an extra layer of clothing i'd be a professional skier yes you know a professional golfer i want to wear short sleeves and a collared shirt and if if they would loosen the rules just a little bit maybe some shorts uh but i think the weather comes into play into certain aspects of certain games the mental game is probably the toughest game in golf right because you feel like sometimes if you hit a bad shot it's very difficult to recover because you're in the trees and you're thinking to yourself, man, I hope I don't hit another tree. Or yes. you lip out a putt, and we've seen it time and time again. Someone lips out a putt from three feet, and all of a sudden now it's a four-foot putt or it's a five-foot putt. And in your mind, you know it's only five feet, but it feels like 50. There's no doubt about it that weather will come into play, but the strong will survive when it comes to the mental game of golf, which, again, as you all know, is the toughest part of golf. Hour one in the books for the Adam Gold Show. Stick around, Adam. uh, Hour two coming your way. We hope to be even more entertaining. Promise. Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network.
It's green jacket season, and no, not because of the pollen, but you're not going to want to miss out on your opportunity for a hole-in-one. Hey, it's Victoria Vonecker here for BetMGM, and we're just starting the Masters, even though this weather is wanting to delay it a little bit today, but that might be helpful for you in case you are still on the fence about creating a BetMGM account. Let me tell you, it is worth it because you can get $150 in bonus bets just by making your first $5 wager and using code VICTORIA150. Now, whether you win or lose that bet and you have a swing and a miss that's okay because you still get that $150 in bonus bets plus when you're using the BetMGM app you'll have options like same game parlays live bets prop bets and fun daily promotions that I personally love so for $5 you'll get $150 to experiment with in bonus bets by using code Victoria 150 see BetMGM.com for terms 21 plus only North Carolina only gambling problem call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc if you see me stopped in the McDonald's drive through just staring at the menu with my what should I order face, don't interrupt. It's the most important decision I'll make all day. Enjoy savings every day when you get a McDouble, McChicken, and other faves. Buy one, get one for a dollar. Plus, get any size Dr. Pepper for just $1.29. Price and participation may vary. Ballot for product of equal or lesser value cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. What are you doing? I'm training for the new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs. I could get a chance to dash through a warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I could win up to $2 million in cash. And that explains the tuxedo. I'm chafing. Feel the rush with new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds of winning are 1 in 3.78. Problem Gambling Helpline 877-718-5543. Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. Dogwood State Bank congratulates the NC State basketball men's and women's programs on their historic runs to the NC double tournament final fours making us remember to never give up thanks for making us all believers in something magical go pack dogwoodstatebank.com you remember the old Cary grant movie an affair to remember i loved that movie how would you like to make it a spring to remember because it is that time of year again diamonds direct annual spring sale event you can get 20 percent off virtually everything in their showroom so here's what i would suggest you've taken my advice before whether you're in the midst of wedding planning or shopping for bands or picking out your next fashion jewelry must have from diamonds direct and there are plenty to choose from you can save an extra 20 percent this weekend off their already crazy low prices now through april 21st all bridal and fashion favorites at diamonds direct are on sale this is a big deal people our favorite bridal styles plus all earrings all bracelets all necklaces stackable bands colored gemstone jewelry and more. DiamondsDirect.com. Tons of stuff. There's more at the showroom. You got to go see it anyway. On Glenwood Avenue, in front of Crabtree Valley Mall, in Raleigh, an incredible 20% off right now at Diamonds Direct Crabtree. This hour on the Triangle Sports Leader is brought to you by the Ritchie Law Firm Injury Lawyers. Shoot, he scores! Go to GotBrian.com. That's GotBrian.com. WCMCHD1 Holly Springs. Take us with you on radio, web, app, Alexa, and YouTube. 99.9 The Fan, the Triangle Sports Leader. Carolina wins this the way they customarily do, and now Jarvis, he'll get to it, streaming into the zone, and his little backhand chance. He'll score! Short-handed! Seth Jarvis! He stuck with it, followed the shot, and Carolina's special team just that 4-1 Hurricanes. I was just looking at the NHL standings as we were kicking things off here. Adam Gold Show, Paul Leihander in for Adam Gold. You can listen to me every once in a while. I fill in here also every day on uh, the station in Raleigh, 99.9 The Fan. For those of you listening across the North Carolina Sports Statewide Network, thanks for hanging out with us. Victoria, though, is here, so you have that familiar voice. 
Yes, there I'm it is. Back. There you go. Yes, she's back. Yes, spent a lot of time getting ready for the Masters yesterday, right? You I were, did. You were making all your you were making your uh, pimento dip and your uh, and your Georgia honey buns or I whatever. I did. I did. I got all of my golf shirts out, all the things. Yep. Mm-hmm. I did. <laughs> all, all, all the things. All the things. Uh, we come into the program here at least this hour talking about, uh, or at least uh, you get a little Carolina uh, Hurricanes uh, highlight there. The Canes, winners of three in a row, they are not playing today. No, they're not. Tomorrow. Uh, yes, tomorrow. They mm-hmm. had uh, some morning skate today at PNC Arena. Everyone seemed to be healthy. Uh, some of the new guys that they brought in, Jackson Blake, actually being one of them, uh, took uh, took some shots today. He's up for the Hobie Baker Award. For those of you who don't know the Hobie Baker, that is the uh, number one. Uh, you'd be the number one player in all of college hockey, and he's up for that award. That'll be brought tomorrow night. Tonight's actually the NCAA Frozen Four, in which there uh, it's Boston College and Boston University. So both the Boston's. All the Boston's all the, park in the car. All the Boston's, <laughs> along with Denver University and Michigan. So there's a, a lot of legitimate play on the ice tonight. That's the Frozen Four NCAA, and then the national championship is on Saturday night. Again, the Carolina Hurricanes, for those of you tuning around, not playing tonight. They play tomorrow in St. Louis as they are closing out uh, their season on the road. Three games they play Friday and Sunday this upcoming weekend. All right, it's time to run a few things back, Victoria. Today happens to be the first day of the Masters. Day one. Numero uno. Dia, dia uno. Right now atop the leaderboard because they got going late due to the weather. And for those of you listening to us who are stuck in the weather, take it easy out there on the roads, as my father would always tell me. Keep it on the shiny part, Paul. Yes, that's good advice. <laughs> Keep it on the shiny part. Uh, there are a lot of names at the top of the leaderboard right now. Is a five-way tie at the top of the leaderboard at minus three. So three under par, the most notable of those names. One Mr. Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, he really should make like a wine company or something. When he's done with golfing, you know, making millions there. DeChambeau wine? <laughs> yeah. There is that. <laughs> Sounds like it. It does. It's got that vibe to it. Uh-huh. Uh, again, with today's uh, weather delay of an hour and a half, there are a number of your favorites may be going off a little bit later uh, than normal. Uh, to, for notables, uh, Akshay Badia, who makes his residency in Wake Forest, he will tee off at 254. I believe he will make at least the top 40. That's a minus 175. We'll talk about placing your bets later on in this hour. Uh, Cameron Young, Wake Forest University, he tees off at 342. That is tentative right now. The weather does look a lot nicer in the Augusta area. And those of you who have the tracers on Tiger Woods and have made him your favorite to follow, he will tee off at 354. Victoria, what time is sunset in Augusta? It is 7.45 so on se- a clear day. 7.45 on a clear day right now. The first group that went out there, it was only a group of two, so this is why I'm a little concerned. The group of two that went out played their first nine holes in two hours and 15 minutes. So it took them 2.15 to play nine holes. So at that rate, we're talking four and a half hour rounds, which means everybody teeing off at 3.30 or later probably won't get in a full round today, which means a little bit of breakfast ball. For those of you who enjoy golf, you'll get some even earlier golf tomorrow, but it also means that uh, if they plan to start Friday tentatively at 8 o'clock, that a lot of the golfers that have to get out there on the course probably will have to get out there at 6.30, 6.45 to finish their rounds before they can start round number two. Maybe that's a good thing for Tiger. Because, you know, as, as the day goes on, your body aches more just from moving. <laughs> right. It just means a lot of extra golf on the second day. Now, I remember yeah. in my youth, Victoria, that I have played, and, and a lot of you have done this too. For those of you who do play golf, Playing 36 holes in one day is not unheard of. You go out and you you play with your friends or family. Usually it involves a trip of some sorts. You yeah. just don't go out and play 36. Um, having done it in both heat and in cold, I can tell you it sucks the life out of you. It just does. And the normal fun that you would have in an 18-hole course, because let's be honest, everybody loves it when the beverage cart comes around. Yes. When that beverage cart pulls up and you grab the uh, slightly melty Hershey's Snickers bar or whatever it is with nuts in it, and it and then you grab something cold to drink, mm-hmm. you can't have as many of the fun cold drinks as you normally would if you play a lot of golf. Now, I'm not saying that they're waiting for the beverage cart at Augusta. Don't get me wrong. 
but that is a lot of golf for a professional golfer, especially when we talk about Tiger Woods. And I know I'm hitting this a little bit too hard, but Tiger is coming off a fifth back surgery and a car crash. Yeah, it's kind of important. An actual car crash. I've been Bad in two, one. I've been in two fender benders. Uh, did not injure myself in either one of those. Uh, nobody was injured in the other cars, thank goodness. Uh, but Tiger rolled the vehicle. Right. There's a big difference. And was in traction. Yeah. And so it is a lot of golf. And I don't know if he's been hiking in the Himalayas or what kind of weight training he's done. I mean, granted, he's able to carry a bag. There is that because he's caddied yeah. for his son, Charlie, before. But that's a lot of golf. So I wish him all the luck, and I wish a lot of the luck to the golfers out there today. Again, top of the leaderboard, in case you were just joining us. Uh, the first group that teed off today is through 10 holes, and there's a five-way tie right now at minus three. All right. O.J. Simpson died. Yep. There's that. That's a, that. O.J. Simpson died. Mm-hmm. Uh, passed away. He had pancreatic cancer, surrounded, according to his family, surrounded by children and grandchildren. It only became public... Two months ago. I was not aware. Like, yeah. I'm not sure how public this was. Uh, that he was... Uh, I was going to say, I've never heard of any of that. So, not to say that, that he it was wasn't public. Dealing but. with that. Yeah. Um, murder trial, we all know, right? So, those of you for not familiar with his sports exploits, he was a very accomplished running back in college and the NFL. Heisman Trophy winner, drafted number one, uh... And then transitioned into an acting career, did commercials, uh, was in the Naked Gun movies, if you remember those from the late 80s, early 1990s, and then was arrested in connection with the killings of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. He was arraigned after the Ford Bronco car chase, for those of you who can throw back that far. That was, wow, that was 30 years ago. I know, that's now that crazy. I'm, now that I'm pinning myself to the dates and doing the calendar math, mm-hmm. that was 30 years ago. Pled not guilty. Then we had the trial of the century, very public. Like, this was TV. Huge. Huge. We learned about the Kardashians, if you can believe that. Uh, and then he was acquitted. And then decided to go, apparently, rob two sports memorabilia collectors. He said it was his stuff. Uh, this was in 2007. He was sent to prison. Then he was paroled and since then lived life in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Putting himself out there on Twitter about, honestly, sports takes that not very many people, I mean, they went, oh, there's O.J. Simpson. What's he talking about? And does it mean anything to me? Yeah. And to a lot of people, honestly, it didn't. No. And, and so O.J. Simpson, the sports character and the Hollywood actor, and O.J. Simpson, the man accused of murder, and then forced to pay money in a civil trial to the families of those two that he was accused and acquitted of murdering, the two just, they're all forever going to be linked. And in the football world, it is strange because when it comes to the Hall of Fame, and I can only speak to the Hall of Fame because this is just what's coming into my head right now. The Football Hall of Fame, there's no delineation. Like, what you do outside of the football field is considered outside of the football field. You don't you don't rescind the Hall of Fame induction. You don't pull that back. While in baseball, we talk about Pete Rose. Now, Pete Rose didn't murder anybody. No. And he was not acquitted of murder of uh, uh, anybody, but he gambled on baseball. And while Pete Rose's accomplishments on the field are on the field, the off-the-field accomplishments keep him from the acknowledgement of the on-the-field. Right. Which is really strange to me. It is. So hypocritical. Like, so one does not go with the other. Anyway... O.J. Simpson's dead. There you have it. Yep. Right. There is a new AAC commissioner. His name is Tom Pernetti. Uh, unfortunately for us, uh, his press conference is happening like right now. Uh, and the reason why this is significant is because uh, Pernetti, who is only the second commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, uh, for those of you listening in Charlotte, those of you listening in Greenville, this affects you because of East Carolina and uh, Charlotte because you are in the AAC. He succeeds Mike Oresco. He was the commissioner once the conference was kind of put back together back in 2013. Uh, Pernetti was working for IMG Sports at the time as he took over uh, the commissioner's role with the AAC. So brand new commissioner for the AAC. Welcome to the Carolinas, Tim Pernetti. Nice. All right. 
Coming up next, an opportunity, as we did in the prior hour, for those of you who joined us, we put a little bit of a bow on the college basketball season. We're going to go a little bit deeper into the NC State scene, and we had a little chat with DJ Horn. That's coming up next here on the Adam Gold Show. Rally to Boom, Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Golf's first major will be found on 99.9 The Fan. Listen all week long as we cover golf's lasting tradition, the Masters. Find out if John Rahm can go back-to-back at Augusta. Rahm wins the Masters Marathon. Depend on us for constant leaderboard updates and every big moment through the presentation of the Champion's Jacket. Coverage of the Masters on 99.9 The Fan is teed up by Traeburn Country Club, the Triangles Golf Escape. Adam Gold here from my friend Dr. Lori Travers and Travers LASIK, the Triangle's only LASIK specialist who can take you to 2020 vision and it's more affordable than you think. 0% financing for 24 months is available and in the spring, giving you $1,000 off. That's right, $1,000 off in the spring. All you got to do is call 919-510-6830, 919-510-6830, Travers LASIK, See what you've been missing. It's truck month at your local Ram dealer. And now's the time to get great deals on our award-winning lineup of trucks. At Ram, all we do is trucks. Maybe that's why Ram is the most awarded light-duty and heavy-duty truck brand over the last five years. Ram trucks feature innovative technology and uncompromised power and dependability that give you the power to strengthen your truck game. Go to Ram.com for great deals and hurry in for the best selection of trucks during Ram Truck Month. Based on total full-size pickup awards 2019 to 2023 CYTD. Based on standard and available features offered. It's bow time. <laughs> Something new just dropped at Bojangles. Take the bold taste of a crispy golden chicken supreme that's been seasoned to perfection, then add dill pickles, Carolina gold barbecue sauce, and a toasted bun that's great on the go. What do you get? You get a Bose bird dog. In fact, you can grab two of them for five bucks. So when you're on the go, headed to practice, or need a snack, grab a Bose bird dog. Hurry in before they're gone. Available for a limited time. It's bow time. There's no time like bow time, but sometimes it's go time. No time to stop. Introducing Bojangles' new bird dog. A seasoned to perfection Bojangles Chicken Supreme, dill pickles, Carolina Gold barbecue sauce, all on a toasted bun. Great on the go. Try two bird dogs for just $5 or a two bird dog combo for just $8. Hurry, Bo's bird dogs are available for a limited time only. When you're hungry for flavor and value, it's Bo time. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Dennis Cox. Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes. With almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. Call 919-381-1760, 919-381-1760, loanpronto.com, 919-381-1760, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. This is Adam Gold. I would like to go to the supermarket with the Bears front office. <laughs> exactly. Right? Oh, no. Do I want, uh, like, fruits and vegetables, or do I want this box of Devil Dogs? Devil Dogs, by the way, the greatest snack cake known to mankind. Unfortunately, you need a lot of milk. <laughs> Otherwise, you're yeah. out of luck. The Adam Gold Show. Adam Gold Show for you on this Thursday. 
Paul Leihander in for Adam Gold. Thanks for hanging out this afternoon. Victoria is here on the ones and the twos. It's great to have her along for the ride, as it is for all of you, and appreciate it wherever you may be hanging out today. You know, college basketball, certainly on the men's and women's sides, have captured plenty of attention, certainly here in the Carolinas, especially with the amazing run by the NC State Wolfpack, taking it all the way to the Final Four in Phoenix, falling just a shade short. But what was special about that run was the personalities that came out with this team. A lot of it had to do with, honestly, a pair of guys with the initials DJ. And everybody called them DJ, the DJs, so to speak. It was always a two-man set. They had a very special bond together, so much they were doing ads together in magazines and certainly within the NC State basketball yearbook. DJ Burns, of course, we all know as the big man. But DJ Horn, who came home after spending time away from the Raleigh area, transferring in from Arizona State in a story program there with Bob Hurley, the brother to Dan Hurley, who eventually won the national championship with his school, UConn. Had a chance to sit down with DJ Horn today. He's working a, a lot of events here uh, post his college basketball years. And yes, he is done. There is no more college basketball for DJ Horn, but he was honest and candid during our conversation. And this is a conversation that's not quite all basketball, but you'll listen to it here on the Adam Gold Show. DJ Horn sitting in the chair. First of all, DJ, as we get things kicked off, you've done a million interviews, million questions thrown at you. You've sat in front of things that have your name printed on them and just people holding up phones to your face asking you questions. What's the one question you are tired of answering? Uh, I mean, you know, no question, especially during this crazy of a run, has been too crazy of a question or a question that I won't answer. But uh, I will say um, the question of, like, you know, how are you feeling right now, you know, has been something that I've been constantly asked. And uh, it's just been something that I haven't been able to put in words. So it's been, you know, a little frustrating to, you know, try to process it. But, um, you know, now that the season is over and everything, I'm starting to, you know, have a lot more of those feelings and everything, so I might give a better answer, but uh, I would say that one. <laughs> All right, so what's the one question you wish you had been asked? In this entire magical run, this entire season, coming from Arizona State, you know, leaving in and out for cookout, now, now, that, now that you're here, what's the one question you would hope people had asked you? Um, I know I'm making you think now. <laughs> it's okay question I wish they would have asked me probably would have been um if you leave Arizona State it's a guarantee you know ACC championship you know are you ready to leave and uh I think I would I would definitely say the same thing as I would, uh, did back then yes but uh just knowing that I would you know have this um as be the end goal here you know um it would have been a no-brainer then too so uh I'll say that you have to check yourself a little bit as you come home, right, to play ball. You see this run that this team makes, the team that you grew up around watching, you know, young and whatnot, and you come here. How do you keep yourself grounded beyond the two other people that are standing in this room with your parents who happen to be wearing your face on their chests and stomachs right now? Uh, yeah, you know, it was definitely uh, a challenge to stay grounded, but, you know, having parents the, uh, like I do, it was – uh, the job was a lot easier um but you know just uh being back home i knew it was going to be a lot of attention just from friends uh this is where i grew up and everything so it's home for me um and just you know during the or the run that we had um you know coach keats was good with keeping us grounded um i knew that this was my last year and um i wanted to be as focused as possible knowing that you know this was my last chance to go out there and, and uh play collegiate basketball so um uh i was i was pretty hard on myself with you know not trying to let all the you know attention get to me cuz i didn't want to lose any focus to not be there for the moment dj horn joining us here uh, dj for state and you coming home and you seeing what this team has meant to this town, what now you guys have in terms of being able to take a new generation into what it's like to be part of the Wolfpack and to have that excitement. What does that mean to you personally? To me, you know, it means everything. It's it's the ultimate reason why I came home. Um, and to know that I'll be etched in history and my hometown forever and to be a, a big reason on why the community and the school and everybody came together 
And um, you know, during that run, you know, they I heard a lot of the it feels like eighty three. Um, it, it just you know, it felt good to bring that much joy and happiness to everybody and see, you know, how everybody could come together for one for one thing. So to look deep into your heart, and I like to ask this question of a lot of athletes who see success and, and will transcend to yet another level, I'm sure you hope, and dream of those things, yeah. and we can talk about that too, but if you could go back and you could stand next to five-year-old you, picking up a ball, shooting at the little tyke's hoop, or shooting yeah. at the big hoop, or whatever it is, and mm -hmm. you're looking at younger you, what are you saying to younger you at that point, knowing what you know now? Uh, yeah, I would just tell my younger self to stay down. You know, everybody has their time. And, um, you know, if you just stay down and stay true to yourself, you know, that's that's all you really can do. And, um, you know, just seeing the way my whole story played out, um, you know, that's the, 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 big, the biggest message that I could give to anybody, um, especially, you know, if I could go back and tell my younger self something. So um, staying down and just staying true to yourself. You've told all the stories, and we've heard all the stories about – you know, night one, night two, night three, you know, survive in advance. And I, I had moved it into a thrive in advance yep. for you guys and to be able to take the steps that you did. The light bulb moment for this team, did it happen midseason? Did it happen postseason? Did it happen? Was what was written on the whiteboard at the beginning of the season the same motto at the end of the season for you guys? Yes, I will say it, it was. Um, you know, Coach Keats was a, a big, firm believer in us going out there and having fun with everything we do. Um, before every game we go out there, that's the last thing that he'll write on the whiteboard is to have fun. And, uh, you know, up until the last game, that was, you know, the, always the message. So um, I would say, you know, going into the, the ACC tournament, we definitely had, you know, meetings as a team and everything. And, um Keats was, again, the, the ringleader and all of that, uh, keeping the vibes positive and everything when, you know, things were looking, you know, not too good and lose the last four of the regular season and everything, um, you know. But he, he definitely let us know that this is a brand new season. Everybody has new life. And, uh, you know, there was no better time for us to come connected as a, a team than uh, the, the time that we did. So uh, that's what March is for. So snap judgments for you. I like to throw a few things out there to see what think. Who had the best hair on the team this year? The best hair on the team this year? I would say me. My hair was always done up in some <laughs> nice styles. Yep. Shout out to Melanie. <laughs> uh, who had the proper playlist going into every game? Like if you had to swap a playlist with somebody and swap headphones and go, you know what, I want to vibe what you're vibing today, yeah. who would you have swapped with? That's tough. I, was, I would have to go with my boy DJ Burns or Breon Pass. Why so? Just because, like, you know, DJ – He's always, I feel like we're always, you know, seeing eye to eye, you know, hence the name DJ DJ. Uh, and then Brion, you know, he just versatile with the with the playlist. Like, he can hit you with something that gets you a beat. He can hit you with this. And he just, he got really everything you need. <laughs> uh, guy, or I, I'm trying to be nice about this one, player who is fashionably challenged. Fashionably challenged. I would say Ernest Ross easily. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, you know, Ern got some. He he got some questionable uh, pieces of clothing that he has in his closet. Uh, I I would start with uh, all the little fuzzy sweatpants, but uh, you know that's that's Ernest Ross though. He only he could wear that type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, choice of ice cream flavor was yours the proper one or? I mean, th this was well documented, right? Ice cream after the wins. Yeah, for sure. You know, mine was cookies and cream. There was, you know, endless of flavors that we would always get, but I was keeping it pretty consistent with the cookies and cream. One motto or one thing that you will always take away from the run that you had here uh, as a member of the Wolfpack? Uh, like my, my people sure say right there, why not us? <laughs> <laughs> Nat, last question for you, DJ. Uh, DJ Horn. Next step for you. Yeah, uh, these next this next step in my basketball journey is definitely not over. Um, you know, uh, I've been taking some time to rest and everything since uh, the the conclusion of my collegiate season. Um, but the next step for me will be declaring for the NBA draft and uh, you know seeing where that process takes me. All right. Well, best of luck to you, and I uh, appreciate the honest answers. Sometimes yeah. you know people put up a little guard, but uh, nah, your guard yeah. definitely down. Although you can guard anybody. Let's just say that. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> appreciate you. Appreciate, yeah, appreciate you. you guys having me. All right. DJ Horn uh, here on the Adam Gold Show, having the chance to speak with that young man and looking him in the eyes, and you can clearly see how much joy he had and really, really appreciated 
enjoying the moment that he was a part of uh, with March Madness, certainly the trip to the Final Four. And for him, again, special, right, to be able to come home, play basketball for a team you grew up watching, play in front of family, and then to achieve, uh, whether it was personal goals or team goals or whatever it was, to reach the heights that NC State had done, you can clearly tell he appreciated all those moments, Victoria. Yeah, and it's a great way to go out, too. Like, hey, you're kind of going out on top. I mean, it wasn't the NCAA championship, but ACC? There you go. Yeah, you could certainly see again, and having the chance to speak with them, and, and very genuine and very uh, humble. There's no doubt about it, but very just he embraced the moment, and it's something that I certainly had talked about during my programs and certainly with others, too. It, championships are special. They are very rare uh, in in sports. And, yes, there are a million sports out there, especially at the collegiate level, high school level, or whatever it is, but you only get to, you only get to be one of one. At that point, there aren't multiples when it comes to that. And they had a South region championship of which there will be a banner hanging in an arena next year that, you know, will collect dust over time. But in, in talking with him afterwards, he, we talked about those generations, the current generation of college basketball fans in the Carolinas will understand that NC state was part of that conversation in 2024, that that cannot be taken away by anybody that it cannot be uh, poo-pooed upon by any sort of fan base, that if you're a college basketball fan, that there is a part of history that comes along with that to make it a Final Four. Whether you achieve the ultimate national championship, only UConn has that taste. But for the teams that reach the Final Four, again, there are four. That is it. Yep. You have the Southern Region Championship. You have a banner to hang high, and I think... For this basketball team for NC State, and I'm not trying to take away, because again, Carolina made went into March Madness, and Duke also made it to that point to where they had to face NC State in that regional final. There are, there are plenty of those moments, but for a fan base and certainly for a team that had a little bit more weight on its shoulders when it entered the ACC tournament and then exited March Madness in the Final Four, there was something special that came along with that run, and he mentioned the callbacks to 83. And in talking with him afterwards and talking to those who have also talked to him and have been around this program, the fact that there were people that were pulling things out of trunks and boxes that had not seen sunlight or oxygen or any other part of a home or apartment or storage unit outside of the inside of that box that were now coming out. For decades, yes. Things that had not seen the light of day, and they're pulling these things out, and they're holding on to the memories that came with that 83. Now they get to have a new memory. Yeah, this meant a lot to those people and even their kids because of that generation like that's gone. Yeah, it's just it's special. They're all they're going to be a part of history for sure. Yeah, there are championships that are won and championships that are made, but also people and personalities that get made and have those special moments. And, I, and so congratulations to DJ Horn, certainly the Wolfpack uh, program, uh, speaking specifically towards the men. We addressed the women early, but the women also had an amazing run as well. A couple of notes here for college basketball I want to pass along to you as we kind of shift gears a little bit. I want to talk about uh, how, uh, here in a couple of moments, how a city like Raleigh or certainly a city like Charlotte can pick up the next professional sports franchise. I'm going to touch on that here in a hot second. And I have the biggest key to do it, by the way. I have one giant key. By the way, my name is Paul Ihander, sitting in for Adam Gold today. Victoria is here. Uh, Omar Ballo, if you're not familiar with that name, we're sticking with the college basketball theme just a little bit here. Omar Ballo is from Arizona. Arizona uh, made a run into the tournament. They usually do. Ballo has decided to hit the transfer portal. Why that is significant is that, as they say, you can't teach height. Armar Ballo is seven feet tall. Uh, has wow. Has played played three seasons with Arizona, sixth man of the year in the Pac-12, now defunct Pac-12. Uh, he was a first-team selection, all-defensive selection, all-tournament team. Last season, uh, averaged uh, 13 and 10. So double-double maker. Uh, he hit the portal just after they left uh, the NCAA tournament, and he has scheduled three official visits and has two more visits planned. Uh, this is a reporting from On3. His visits are with Indiana, Louisville, and Kansas State. 
on three also reporting he's going to add visits to two more schools, Florida and North Carolina. Oh. North Carolina has, as we know, a little bit of a a need in the low post. They have Jalen Washington uh, there right now. They lose Armando Baycott. Omar Ballo and Hubert Davis. I don't know what kind of shoes you have that you wear when you want to close a deal, when you want to bring in a recruit that you are really high on, or whatever those shoes are. I would suggest dusting those off. Break them out. Shining those things up, and as Victoria said, break them out. Because Omar Ballo can produce for you. And he is a rim protector. And as we have seen, certainly in the Final Four, rim protectors are in need. And rim protectors get the job done. Donovan Klingon, if you have a nickname, we talked about Tiger Woods having a nickname, right? Donovan Klingon, who they called Kling Kong oh, right. <laughs> at 7-2 at UConn, who was expected to be a lottery pick in the upcoming NBA draft, was a big rim protector. And Zach Eady, two-time player of the year in the NCAA. NC, I'm sorry, you're not supposed to say NCAA. NCAA. Oh. Uh, rim protector as yeah. well at 7-4. He's crazy good. Omar Ballo, three official visits, and apparently, according to On3, is going to add visits to Carolina and Florida. I like it. So that should be certainly positive news there. Mm -hmm. All right, so we kicked off the hour talking a little bit about the NHL, specifically to the Carolina Hurricanes. This does not necessarily apply to the Hurricanes directly, or does it? So here's how I'm going to tell all of you, and I'm going to give you the clear-cut instruction. How? A city like Raleigh or a city like Charlotte, because I know there are uh, uh, campaigns in both cities about how they want a Major League Baseball team. There is a thing going on right now within the NHL to where there have been multiple reports in the last 24 hours. As a matter of fact, in the last 12 hours to where there are plans being drafted, two separate scheduling plans for the Arizona Coyotes. The Arizona Coyotes, to give you a little bit of a backstory, the Coyotes have been looking for a home for quite a while. They have ownership. Alex Morello is his name. He owns uh, media holdings. He also owns a couple of casinos. Uh, He has money. The casinos are in Nevada, so he's doing okay for himself. And he bought himself the Arizona Coyotes. And this was supposed to be a pretty exciting time for the Arizona Coyotes. They get new ownership, no longer owned by the NHL. And then things start happening in Arizona in the market in Phoenix. They lose their lease with the city of Glendale. They start looking for new places to play. They have a $1.5 billion deal that has to be voted on in Tempe, Arizona. Entertainment complex, they're going to build a big arena in Tempe. Voters say no, which is why you cannot ask for public funds to build things. Yes. Do not do it. It doesn't work out well. So that leads me to this other thing. And this this will all tie together really nicely, folks, once I get there. So bear with me. So in Arizona, the Coyotes are going to try to privately fund something. But what it hinges on is them winning a piece of land in the northern part of the Phoenix area, in an area called North Scottsdale. It sits right next to a freeway. There's easy on, easy off access to that freeway. However, there's no infrastructure. There's no power. There's definitely no water in the desert. As we know, they've been dealing with drought. And the local uh, local civic leadership isn't too keen on it. They don't think it's a good place to build. All right. So now that the line has formed of people that do not want this in this space, there are now things flying around. Memoranda to Board of Governors. The Board of Governors consists of all the owners of the 32 NHL franchises. One of those happens to be Tom Dundon of the Carolina Hurricanes, in which, now, apparently some people have seen the memo, some have not. There is no deal done, but there is a deal in the works for the Arizona Coyotes to move to Salt Lake City, to where the NHL would purchase the team from Alex Morello for a billion dollars. They would then take that billion-dollar team and sell it to Ryan and Ashley Smith in Salt Lake City. Ryan and Ashley Smith are the owners of the Utah Jazz for $1.3 billion. Wow! The $1 billion back to the league, the $300 million left over, spread out among the rest of the teams in a little profit-sharing agreement. All right? So no expansion fee paid, but everyone's going to get a little cut of this pie. 
How does this tie to the Carolina Hurricanes, Paul? Well, here's the deal. Back in January, the Smiths came out and publicly stated, put out a big press release saying, we wish the NHL to open up expansion talks for a team in Salt Lake City. Well, closest city to Phoenix that is looking for a hockey team that so happened to pound the day so loud and say, you know what? We have the money and we don't need a building. We have the building because you know why? We run the NHL, t- the NBA team inside this building in the Delta Center. They're going to march, not just march. It is going to be a cattle drive from Phoenix to Salt Lake City because Ryan and Amanda Smith opened up their mouths. Yeah. They have the money, and they were the loudest in the room. Why they are not going to Houston? Well, Houston doesn't have any loud people shouting at the rooftops. Apparently not. Why are they not going to Atlanta? Atlanta doesn't have ownership. Atlanta has two groups trying to build arenas to house the hockey teams. One on the north side of Atlanta, if you are familiar with Atlanta, in the Alpharetta area. Alpharetta, very nice area, plenty of tax base, plenty of fan base that would be there. They want to build one there. The other group in Atlanta wants to build one on the south side of Atlanta. Again, another entertainment district with a hockey team. Now, they've tried hockey in Atlanta. It was kind of a perfect storm with the Atlanta Thrashers. Didn't quite work. The last game, I believe, if you read the history books, drew like 9,800. Oh. But they are loud about an arena, not loud about the team. So if you have money and you are the loudest in the room, yeah, you will get a team. Win-win. Remember, this was January when the Smiths came out and said, we wish the NHL to open up talks about a team. And now all of a sudden, three months later, Salt Lake City is on the brink of getting an NHL team, if you believe all the reports that are out there. So, Paul, where are you getting at this? It's been five minutes. You're blabbering on. Tom Dundon, back in November, the owner of the Carolina Hurricanes, says he would use his efforts to bring an MLB team to the Carolinas, specifically Raleigh. I love it. Now, I'm not saying that Charlotte is out of this conversation by any means because Charlotte should be involved in this conversation. They are a large media market. There is a grassroots effort in Charlotte, but not as organized as we are here in Raleigh. That is for sure. But remember when Tom Dundon said that that was back in November. He was the loudest in the room back in November Mm. when it came to a Major League Baseball team. There is a team out west that does not have a home. The Oakland A's. Yes. They have a temporary home. They do. But they do not have a permanent home. They have loyal fans. <laughs> yeah, loyal fans that want to keep them in Oakland. They do. That team is not staying in Oakland. They're not. <laughs> now, John Fisher, the Oakland A's, who owns the A's, is not really vibing to sell right now. But what I am saying is they don't have a home yet. And Major League Baseball, much like the NHL, does not want them playing in a minor league park forever. No, they don't. That's three years in Sacramento, and then they got to go somewhere. There are no shovels in the ground in Las Vegas. Wink, wink, Tom Dundon. Not one shovel in the ground in Las Vegas. They shut down the hotel where they want to build this thing, but they are still several years away. Much like the case with the NHL in Arizona. Even if the ownership with the Coyotes manages to win this land auction, they are still years away from playing in this new building. Their lease runs out with Arizona State University, which is where the Arizona Coyotes are playing hockey in a year. They cannot stay there. So, Mr. Dundon, this is where we're all coming back to you. Yes. Can you be the loudest in the room? You clearly want the support, and don't worry about Roy Cooper. He's the outgoing governor. Roy Cooper, congratulations for getting behind the the baseball team, bringing baseball to North Carolina. You're a lame duck governor. I'm sorry. You have no more power. So, Tom Dundon, I turn to you. You have the money. You are involved clearly in professional sports with both the NHL and pickleball. You want baseball? Here's how you get it. Mm -hmm. I want you to be the loudest in the room. Yes, he can be. We know he can. That's the one key. Yeah. That is all it needs to be. Adam Gold Show here. Paul Leihander filling in for Adam. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Victoria here as well. Coming up next, we will stretch. Adam Gold Show, stick around. 
Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Trust ACT Construction Equipment and Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders to position your tree service for success. ACT Construction Equipment is your authorized dealer for sales, service, parts, and rentals for Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders. ACT Construction Equipment has been your authorized dealer for Bandit Equipment for over 10 years. Visit one of our six North and South Carolina locations or actce.com for more details on Bandit Wood Chippers and Stump Grinders. ACT Construction Equipment, always the right equipment for the job. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Adam Gold here, and right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you make your first $5 wager because you know me. FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up. FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up. Then you can bet on anything. Slap shots, home runs, slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. $200 in bonus bets await when you place your first $5 wager. Visit FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to get started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus is issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.com. The Body Armor State Games are coming to Charlotte this June. Registration is open to athletes of all ages and skill levels in 25 different sports. The Body Armor State Games features 13,000 athletes and 700 teams. Don't miss out on North Carolina's largest sports festival of the year. Visit BodyArmorStateGames.org today. The Body Armor State Games are proud to partner with Truist, Harris Teeter, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Healthcare.gov is here for you when life happens. If you lost your health coverage because of turning 26, going off Medicaid, leaving your job, or moving, you could be eligible to enroll in new coverage now. And if you need to update your coverage because of marriage or having a baby, you could also be eligible. But don't wait. There's a limited time to enroll. Check your eligibility at healthcare.gov today. Life happens. Get covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It's the first day of the first grade, and she found a new best friend. It's a laid back Sunday afternoon, you wish would never end. The homemade taste of Bluebell, and good friends gathered round. The good old days are being made right now. St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream, a cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. Look for Bluebell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. Fair housing is more than just a celebration in April. For North Carolina's realtors, it's an everyday standard. For the 56,000 realtors across our state, we embrace and support fair housing to stamp out discrimination in all forms. As realtors, we believe fairness is worth fighting for, and we won't stop until the fight is won. Celebrating Fair Housing Month, North Carolina Realtors. We open doors to everyone. Paid for by North Carolina Realtors. This is Adam Gold. If the kids want to get on the floor, they're going to get on the floor. They'll find a way. There are too many ways to get on the floor. Yeah, and they've been drinking liquid courage all day. <laughs> and that, that is very so possible, mean. but only the ones that are old enough. Only the older that. ones, yes. So, the Adam Gold Show. Dance, dance, dance. Paul Ihander in for Adam Gold today. Thanks for making us a part of your afternoon. Hopefully we've uh, provided a little bit of interesting to your day. I suppose, Victoria, I'm going to take the big yawn and it's time to stretch. 
Always good to stretch. I need to stretch a little more, I think. <laughs> After doing Drive Shack yesterday, it just lets you know how much you don't do Drive Shack. So <laughs> it was fun, but ooh, yeah, I'm feeling it, Tiger. I feel you. So this is, I found this interesting. <laughs> Are you hurting every day, Victoria? <laughs> yeah, I'm aching every day. So I thought this was hilarious because we're all, we all fit under this umbrella. So 55% of Americans trust Google more than their own education. It's a verb, man. Google is a verb. <laughs> Google is absolutely a verb. And uh, whether you stopped at high school, maybe you didn't finish high school, even went into college, you still trust Google more because the average American estimates that they use only about half of the information they learned in schools in their adult life, which is true. It's oh, true. it's such a shame. I'm te- trying is. to teach my son because he questions me about some of the math concepts and things like that and yeah. some of the some of the literature things. He goes, when am I going to use this, Dad? My son is, by the way, way too smart for being 10 years old. <laughs> uh, smart. I think he's t- a little bit of smart ass sometimes, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he, sometimes he pushes back and I go, man, I get, you know, I try to remember the things that I learned in school, too, yeah. like acute and obtuse triangles. Right. But I am not an engineer. But there are engineers who need to know those kinds of things. Absolutely. Or if you ever go on a trivia show, like Jeopardy, sometimes that goes to the end. Sometimes it does. <laughs> so you can use it then. Uh, I found that this was funny. And they it's funny you should say that. They did ask people, and 81% of them were willing to take an adulting crash course on things like managing their money and taxes and all the things that I wish school would have taught. Why did we not have a class? I mean, we had a class on how to make pillows and raise children with little babies like the dummies. You know, those are important (laughs) skills. Some of the most important skills that we're taught in school, Mm -hmm. home ec, I want to thank Mrs. Morton for helping me sew. I can do buttons like nobody's business. When I sit with my daughter on the ground last night, we were building finger puppets. Oh, I know. Nice. I'm not the perfect dad, but I was building finger puppets last night. I love it. And we were stitching things together, and I, I forgot that you didn't need to really tie the thread around the needle. You just pull it through so you could have a little I bit see, of tether. Yeah. But I tied it off, and I got chided by my wife last night. <laughs> you don't need to tie this off. And I'm like, but that's what Mrs. Morton said to do. <laughs> no, and I'm living by this. I remembered <laughs> this class. So I love it. No, those are all important. But, yes, don't feel bad if you Google everything. Because, honestly, people need to Google more, I think, before they say some things. Okay. But <laughs> okay. they can Google. So, you know, Google's always there just in case you have questions. But, yes, we can all relate with that. Now... One thing I think a lot of us can relate with, and you might stand a certain way. This is def- This might be a hot topic button. Okay. To wear a band tee that you know none of their music or to not wear that band tee. Nope. Can't do it. Thank you. Can't do it. Thank you. I agree with this. So a recent poll came out saying 30% of Americans still wear shirts that they know nothing about the band. They don't Ugh. know their music. And see, because of the kind of music that I listen to, which also in this survey, it did say that the average person will spend about $400 on band tees in their lifetime. I think that is way too low <laughs> because band tees are like $50 yes, a pop are. almost. So that's what, four? No, we're going to. But they say metal metal fans spend almost an average of 500 yet you can probably triple that. Uh, and there's like 34% of Americans own a shirt that they've never gone to a concert of, which I can understand, but at least know the music because I can, oh my gosh, I've got so many friends who just want to pop quiz people who wear like Metallica shirts or Nirvana because, you know, Target sold all those yes, T-shirts. Yes, they do. You can get them at Kohl's now. Yes. So all of these people are wearing shirts and they know nothing about the music. So stuff in my genre, there's a lot of that going on. And trust and believe if I'm wearing a shirt, I went there. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know their music. So if you see me with one, pop quiz away because I got you. But, yeah, that's... Oh, you're not alone if people are wearing shirts they shouldn't. And last but not least, I found this fascinating. I love Keanu Reeves movies. I don't know about you. No, I love Keanu Reeves movies. He is a great actor. I love him. Where am I going with this? Yes, where are you going with this? As many people know, he's like in a million John Wick movies, right? A lot of action, a lot of choreography. I mean, he is a bad A, and it is awesome. I love those. Well, back in January, I don't know if you saw Keanu uh, with crutches at all. Okay, well, a director came out with the, uh, the secrets as to where this happened. 
So 15 days into shooting this movie called, quote, Good Fortune, where Keanu plays an angel named Gabrielle. Okay. He tripped over a rug. (laughs) And he fractured his kneecap from tripping over a rug where he played an angel in a movie. But yet we see John Wick and he's just like kicking all the A, doing all the things. And it's, yeah, so... He's human just like us. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. <laughs> yes. Speed. I love it. I love it. Hardball. This. Another one. He played I, it. He was actually an athlete. It's fantastic. I, I'm a big fan of this. But oh, and you know what? I've got one more other okay. thing because we have time for it. If you also work out, speaking of him doing all this stuff, working out, it makes me sweat just to watch him because all this going on, like he doesn't have to go to the gym. But if you do go to the gym, go late in the evening. Because apparently it works better for people if you work out later in the evening than in the morning or afternoon. Why? And there's a study talking about this. They've looked at people over eight years, and they say that they have a 61% lower risk of things like heart disease and whatnot. And the data suggests that it's because our bodies are primed to handle blood sugar better late in the day. So you might go to bed and your blood pressure is lower throughout the night into the morning. A little different thought for me. When I work out at night, I get endorphins. It it wakes me me up. Yeah, it keeps me from sleeping. I know. I know. So I don't know. That's just a fun little tidbit in case you were wondering. I'll take it. You know what else is a fun little tidbit? What's that? Play some bets. Place your bets. Place your bets. Here we are. I bet you slice into the woods a hundred bucks. Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir, and I never slide. Yeah. Okay, you can owe me. I owe you nothing. All right. How Lay them on me. How many you got today? Uh, I've got three of okay. them. Okay, I've got three as well. Okay, so my first one... I think it's all going to be on the ice today. The okay, all uh, Detroit, hockey. all hockey. Give me all the hockey. Detroit Red Wings are going to be in Pittsburgh taking on the Penguins. This, I don't know. This is going to be a fun game to watch. But I think the Penguins are on semi fire right now. So Sidney Crosby absolutely is, which is no different than any other day. So give me him as an anytime goal scorer plus one forty five. Why is okay. it plus money? I don't it's so know. weird. It is strange. It's a little strange. I know. All right, I'm going to stick with your hockey theme. I have two hockey bets, one golf bet. Uh, golf bet I'll give to you in a hot second here. Uh, I'm going to stick with the hockey theme. Uh, Washington trying to make the playoffs. Uh, they've been trying to roll a little bit. They find themselves on the other side against Buffalo tonight, which is strange to mm-hmm. me. Alex Ovechkin is going to drag them on his back. <laughs> yes, like he's he going is. to hitch all the wagons to him. Uh, he is his 18th. 30-point goal scorer, uh, scoring season, uh, Washington plus 115 on the money line. Okay, well, and that's very familiar with my next one. Ottawa Senators are going to be in Tampa Bay taking on the Lightning. The Lightning, they're just notorious for, like, turning the switch on when it gets closer to the playoffs and when they're in the playoffs. And Nikita Kucherov is also dragging this team, kicking and screaming. So I don't know how he's plus money, but for an anytime goal score, he's plus 115. So check. No, oh, there you go. Check, check, and mm-hmm. recheck. All right, President's Trophy race, staying with the ice one more time here. New York Rangers obviously have a, a few points ahead of the Carolina Hurricanes, trying to stay up ahead. The, apparently all roads for the Canes will end up running through the New York Rangers. Yeah. It, 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 I struggle with this pick just because, but it is what it is. The Philadelphia Flyers are terrible. It's not the greatest money whatsoever, but Rangers on the money line, minus 210. Okay. Well, yeah. No, that's my next one, too, is also the Flyers and the Rangers. And I love this guy. I've been watching his career when he was with other teams as well, but he's on the Rangers right now. I would hate to go up against him again. Artemi Panarin is Ooh. awesome. I used to call him Panini because his name, I just said, this is what I do. <laughs> Anytime goal scorer, he's plus 135, which oh, wow. I also think is kind of weird because he's on fire. But you know what? I'm going with him anytime goal scorer. Are they not playing at PNC? Because if they're playing at PNC, that'd be minus money. Exactly. If I go to Panarin game at PNC, he's going to score. He's going to score at least Sorry, once. just how it works. Every time. You're going to have to lock me out of Rangers games. Yep. Uh, last one for me. This is golf. Uh, I just saw him warm up on the range. Akshay Badia, who I have mentioned uh, from Wake Forest. It is his first Masters tournament. Ooh. Uh, and he is to make the top 40 minus 175. So that's where I'm going with him. Yeah. I'm not saying he's going to win the whole darn thing. I'm not saying he's going to be in contention all the entire time. But right now, as I look at the numbers from the Masters right now on top of the leaderboard, it is Ryan Fox of New Zealand in his second Masters appearance at five under par through eight holes. 
Through eight holes, he is 500. But Badia to be in the top 40 at the end of the day, minus 175. There are your bets. Hey, we've got plenty of sounds coming your way. Adam Gold Show never rests. Stick around. Rally to boom, Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Hey, it's Adam Gold from my man, Coach Pete Theroux, Capital Financial Advisory Group in Apex. Like me, like you, Coach Pete Theroux is a homeowner, and we all know as homeowners, the worst thing your home can have, termites. That eats away at the foundation. You know, your finances can have termites as well. So be wary of the financial termites in your retirement planning and go over to Coach Pete Deruta at Capital Financial Advisory Group so he can exterminate whatever financial termites you've got. Call 888-843-0013 or text ADAM to 600-700. 888-843-0013 or text ADAM to 600-700. We're going to get you in front of Coach Pete Deruta with a free, total, customized retirement plan for you, free of financial termites. We'll also get you one of Coach Pete's best-selling books. He's got a bunch of those, none of which have financial termites. Awesome. The foundation of your financial future will be sound. Coach Pete Deruta, Capital Financial Advisory Group, and Apex. Text ADAM to 600-700 right now. America's favorite car show returns to Raleigh with cool cars, cool people, and good time. It's the Good Guys Night, Rio's Garage, North Carolina National, and it's all happening April 19th through the 21st at the North Carolina State Fairground. Check out over 1,500 of the Southeast's finest classes. Shop the swap meet in Vendor Midway. Experience the metal crunching Saturday Night Demolition Derby and so much more. And don't miss the return of high-octane Good Guys CPV Auto Cross Racing Action all weekend long. And it's all going down April 19th through the 21st at the North Carolina State Fairground. Get details at good guys Pulling up to Mickey D's just for drinks? Oh yeah, that's me. Nothing extra, just perfection and a straw. Coming in hot for the coldest cups on the block. Because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. Now get an ice cold lemonade, frozen Coca-Cola, or iced coffee. Any size for just $1.79. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Price and participation may vary, cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. What are you doing? I'm training for the new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs. I can get a chance to dash through a warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I could win up to $2 million in cash. And that explains the tuxedo. I'm chafing. Feel the rush with new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds of winning are 1 in 3.78. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. Your new Academy Sports and Outdoor store is now open in Nightdale with great brands at the best prices. In here, you'll always find the gear you need to do what you love out there. Get it all at your new Academy Sports and Outdoor store in Nightdale. Timmy, everybody. Great job. Next up, we have Samantha. Ten times better performance can make a big difference. Castrol Edge motor oil gives your engine ten times better high temperature performance. Castrol Edge, better oil for maximum performance. Now through April 23rd, get a $15 gift card when you buy five or more quarts of Edge or Edge High Mileage Full Synthetic, only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Claim based on Sequence 3 H test versus API SP test limits. This hour on the Triangle Sports Leader is brought to you by the Ritchie Law Firm Injury Lawyers. Shoot, he scores! Go to gotbrian.com. That's gotbrian.com. WCMC HD1 Holly Springs. Take us with you on radio, web, app, Alexa, and YouTube. 99.9 The Fan, the Triangle Sports Leader. Look what what this that this team was able to accomplish. I I sit back and I just don't know how you can win nine elimination games. All of those nine games 
And we only had one of them that was um, not a double digit when we got in the NCAA tournament. It wasn't a double digit win. These guys always believed, they trusted. Even when we didn't have any, uh, we wasn't having success. You know, they believed in me, they believed in the staff, and um, they stuck together and they shut out all the outside noise with, you know, the internet and everything else and, and came out as champions. Plenty of belief, certainly. North Carolina State head coach on the men's side, Kevin Keats, talking about his team's magical run in the Final Four. A 2024, certainly never to forget. If you can think about it, it's only been a month. Like, legitimately four weeks or so when this team began practicing at the ACC tournament up until now. That was an amazing run. I'm sure there'll be a documentary or a a small 30 for 30 that could be put together by somebody with a bunch of footage. If it doesn't come from state, it needs to come from somebody who's been documenting it for sure. And I saw enough camera phones and, uh, and smartphones. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This era is a lot different than 83. So there should be plenty of options. Undeniable. There'll be, there'll be another generation of people, maybe 30 years, maybe well after you and I are gone, uh, Victoria, where they'll say you, it feels like 24. Right? Feels like 24, which seems strange to say. Adam Gold Show here on a Thursday. i got to check myself on the date sometimes, and the only reason I know it's a Thursday is because it's the first day of the Masters. Paul Weihander in for Adam today. Uh, Adam will also be out tomorrow. Dennis Cox will be filling in for Mr. Gold. But Victoria is always here yes. and makes things hum along as we need them to. And at this point of the program, it is time for, for me to say it's time for a little... Wall of Sound. The Wall of Sound is a function of this studio. There's no doubt about it. It's funny. I thought that for a hot second, I thought it was Christopher Walken. So I was doing uh, my best, Christopher right? Walken. But I liked it's, it. it's a t- no. You shouldn't. That was awful. <laughs> that was an awful Sometimes Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken's even a bad Christopher Walken. So, you know, there's different kinds. Chris, what you feeling like? <laughs> Christopher Walken. That's terrible. Uh, maybe one of our running mates here in the building. I know Tim Donnelly on 99.9 The Fan in Raleigh does a bunch of impressions. And maybe <gasps> his maybe he does a good Walken. Does he? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I just have saying. To catch a Tim impression. On so I, something. I've got some decent ones, but clearly my walk in is terrible. Oh, we're going to have to get him on here for that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about betting on the NBA. There is uh, uh, clearly clearly a lot of motions when it comes to sports betting uh, in the United States. And a lot of it has to come down to, I mean, we're seeing prop bets clearly uh, that are coming under fire for college basketball. And there's a movement to make that happen. Also within the NBA, John T. Porter could face a lifetime ban over a scandal in which he placed bets. Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, talked about those consequences of players betting on the sport that they play in. I have enormous uh, range um, of, of discipline available to me, but um, it's cardinal sin, you know, that, that what he's accused of in the NBA and, and the ultimate uh, extreme option I have is you know, to ban him from the game. I mean, this is, that's the level of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, of, of authority I have here because there's nothing more serious, I think, in, uh, you know, around this league when it comes to, you know, gambling and betting on our games, and that is a direct player involvement. And so the investigation is ongoing, but, you know, the, the consequences could be very severe. John Tay Porter played for the Toronto Raptors. What got him flagged was the idea that he was doing a bunch of prop bets that ran from late January into the middle of March because apparently he was trying to bet ten, twenty thousand dollars in a bunch of unders on himself. Oh yeah, yeah, you can't do that. And he ended up checking out of a game uh, early with an eye injury, and then in another game he left with a reported illness. So the league is looking into it. A lot of things got flagged to it. Again, betting on your own team and specifically on your own self when you're thinking about changing the game in general and it's you. Yeah. And it's not somebody else or a different team altogether. Way too many red flags in this one. Um, Speaking of betting, by the way, this not part of the wall of sound, but this leads into it. Uh, There was a, a federal criminal complaint today posted against Ipe Mizuhara. Ipe Mizuhara was Shohei Otani's former interpreter. He was accused of stealing money from Otani to pay off gambling debts. We thought it was $4.5 million. 
No, it was much more. <gasps> oh, no. Apparently, the federal criminal complaint, and against Mizuhara, apparently, is trying to negotiate a deal. In the federal court documents, and this is Shohei Otani's, one of his closest friends. Now, Victoria, you have friends, right? Right, yes. I have friends. Yes. Think about your closest friends. Mm -hmm. Do you think your closest friends would do you wrong in that way? No. They also would not have my bank account information, but they would not do that. <laughs> so the report out there was $4.5 million. In the federal court documents, again, just put out in the last 20 minutes or so, $16 million. <gasps> What? That Six, is quadruple. $16 million to pay off gambling debts. Wow. There is help for those of you out there who find yourself in that kind of a situation. There truly is. There there are plenty of resources out there if you find yourself in that kind of underwater situation. For Ipe Mizuhara, it went well beyond just addiction to gambling. It became a near criminal enterprise Yeah. for what he was doing, at least according to these federal court documents. Again, not $4.5 million, $16 million. Times it by four. That is astronomical. That wow. is a number that, as I presented to you, you were shocked when mm -hmm. I read it. I was just shocked as well. All right, let's continue with the wall of sound. Uh, our friends at Unsportsmanlike on ESPN Radio had a discussion. Who is more likely to win one more big one? They chose between LeBron James, Steph Curry, Eldrick Tiger Woods, or Aaron Rodgers. The most likely to get one more. Tiger, LeBron, Steph, or Aaron Rodgers. Is Tiger even in that conversation for you it guys? Definitely I is. mean, yeah, I would, say I would say Tiger's probably the most likely to get one more. I, I would say that Tiger has a better chance than those guys, but that is a low bar to clear. And and I hate to say that about somebody that has been so important, not just to golf, but to sports over the last three decades. So I guess the, the question is, in, in terms of context, is it just to win a tournament or is it to win like the yeah. tournament of tournaments? Because I would not have guessed as much as I like Tiger or Eldrick Woods. <laughs> I would not have guessed that one. Because I'm like, Steph Curry still has a runway in his sport. Yes, that would have been my guess, Steph. Right. Ste LeBron James, probably towards the end of his career, he's fishing. If he's going fishing for rings, he's not going to find it in Los Angeles. And Aaron Rodgers is... Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah, he's... Uh, well... He might be in a cave. Who but if Tiger <laughs> Woods, I mean, but Tiger Woods could win a could win another major. I don't see that. I don't, that's not an unlikely sure. thing. But I think in terms of just context, it. For me, it's probably Steph Curry. Yes, I would agree. Right there. All right, uh, sticking with the ESPN theme, football this time. Uh, Damian Woody out there with kind of an unusual theory, but some of this might have to do uh, with Dak Prescott's uncertain status and the fact that he doesn't have a long-term deal in Dallas. Damian Woody thinks the Cowboys should draft a quarterback in the NFL draft here in two weeks. It would be malpractice for the Dallas Cowboys not to address the quarterback situation in the draft. I think they have to be proactive in the draft. You know, I don't see them going in the first round, but I think I could see them going in the in the in the like early to mid rounds to go get a quarterback to kind of hedge himself if Dak Prescott were to leave in free agency. But why? Why <laughs> hinge yourself on the idea of a rookie? I mean, they had Trey Lance in camp. I'm not sure that was just a one off kind of thing, but why do you think that you can get some help in a third round or a fourth round mid-round quarterback when the track record just isn't there for those quarterbacks this is a quarterback heavy draft there's no doubt about it lots of skill at the top level we know the top three Daniels May and Caleb Williams J.J. McCarthy has now found himself in that conversation yeah. there's still Bo Nix out there there's still Michael Penix out there I just named six off the top of my head without having to pregnant pause right and yeah. he's suggesting Damian Woody and again he played in the NFL and might be a smarter guy than I am, but I disagree with him. I'm not sure that's where you go fishing for help in a draft. Yeah, this, they've got some other pieces they need to uh, plug in there with this puzzle. Gardner Minshew is on a one-year deal with the Raiders. Why not just run back Gardner Minshew? He's won games. He won games with the Indianapolis Colts. Mm -hmm. He's now with the Raiders with Aiden O'Connell, who is there. Aiden O'Connell, who was a draft choice by the Raiders, but they signed Minshew for a reason. Is it full youth movement to go out and get somebody? And maybe it's the recency bias of Tony Romo. And I'm not saying that's recent, but Tony Romo was not a first-round pick for the Dallas Cowboys. It, 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 it just doesn't feel right to me. It's the discussion that I might say for a little bit later why the Carolina Panthers should not be out trying to gather more picks in later rounds. Yeah. I think we can have that conversation. Yeah. I truly do. 
All right, there's your wall of sound, folks. Coming up next, an update on the Masters and why I feel we need to adjust our expectations of Tiger Woods. Adam Gold Show rolls on. Going beyond the box scores, Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Listen to 99.9 The Fan every afternoon during the drive for your chance to see the storm surge in person. It's our 10K playoff payout. Try your luck at playoff tickets by discovering the golden puck. And like last year, take your ultimate shot at $10,000. Let's go! Listen for the 10K playoff payout driven by your Carolina Ford dealer. For great offers on a new Ford truck or SUV, see your Carolina Ford dealer today. Playoffs are right around the corner in the NHL and the NBA, Major League Baseball in full swing, so basketball's over, we'll live. Adam Gold here for FanDuel, America's number one sports book, inviting you to sign up now and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you make your first $5 wager and you don't even have to win it. FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold to sign up. FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold. You can bet on anything you want. You want to bet on European football? You want to bet on darts? You can't bet on Quidditch because that's doesn't exist. $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place your first $5 wager, sign up now. FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Bonus is issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. It's truck month at your local Ram dealer. And now's the time to get great deals on our award-winning lineup of trucks. At Ram, all we do is trucks. Maybe that's why Ram is the most awarded light-duty and heavy-duty truck brand over the last five years. Ram trucks feature innovative technology and uncompromised power and dependability that give you the power to strengthen your truck game. Go to Ram.com for great deals and hurry in for the best selection of trucks during Ram Truck Month. Based on total full-size pickup awards 2019 to 2023 CYTD, based on standard and available features offered. Dogwood State Bank congratulates the NC State basketball men's and women's programs on their historic runs to the NCAA Tournament Final Fours, making us remember to never give up. Thanks for making us all believers in something magical. Go Pack! DogwoodStateBank.com It's brews, blues, and barbecue Saturday, April 13th from 3 till 9 at Hugger Mugger Brewing in downtown Sanford. And you don't want to miss it. Live bands, a barbecue cook-off, and the beer hall all in one afternoon. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours today at Eventbrite.com. Adam Gold in studio with my man Dallas Brule from the Aluminum Company of North Carolina. And the Spring Open House is coming up this Friday and Saturday. And I know one of the things that we're going to be able to see, all different types of siding. This is your favorite thing, isn't it? Siding. Yes, Adam, our siding products, the vinyl products, the hardy plank products, the factory painted hardy plank siding products. You know, as the weather warms up, if you're walking around your house, it's time for a paint job. If you see a little bit of rotten wood here or there, a great investment, a great way to fix all that is to remove all the siding and go back with either factory painted hardy plank or vinyl siding and it adds a lot of value to your home plus with our financing you don't pay one penny till we're done and you're 100 percent happy and we can also fix it up where it's 18 months same as cash with no interest well you're just speaking right to me i don't even need siding and i want siding now a lot of times we're getting the call people are surprised at how much the paint job cost a lot of times you can get the siding products the vinyl siding for not much more aluminum company of north carolina 1335 hamlin road or go to our website at aluminum company.com for the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time there's granger offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need plus you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you call click granger.com or just stop by granger for the ones who get it done this is Adam Gold. <laughs> what type of soup is Jason Kelsey? Uh, he would be like a like a chicken and dumplings. Oh, chicken and dumpling. Yeah. Very nice. Maybe like uh, an Italian wedding soup. What kind of soup would Travis Kelsey be? Travis, I feel like he'd be like a tomato bisque. <laughs> the Adam Gold Show. Adam Gold Show. Paul Eihander in for Adam today. Thanks for letting me take you on a ride today through the business of interesting sports. 
Get you caught up on the Masters for those of you trying to pay attention. Those of you may have dropped a few props in place. Ryan Fox is the leader right now through nine holes. He is a scorching five under par. Byung Hwan in uh, Byung, Byung Hwan An is at four under through eight. And Eric Von Ruyen, who was the first golfer to tee off today at at ten thirty, oh. so he's still on the course. Yeah, uh, he is through fourteen. He is three under. So that is your leaderboard right now. Uh, five right now, not in the clubhouse. Notables, Phil Mickelson at minus one. And uh, Wake Forest University's Will Zalatoris, alum, he is at one under through five. Okay. So uh, Masters settling in pretty nicely as things get underway. Still a lot of uh, golf to be played today. Right now, as I'm scrolling through the leaderboard again, there's only 89 who have uh, teed off, but right now... The struggle bus is at plus four. Plus four is the number. Min Woo Lee of Australia through six holes is at plus four. Oh, yeah. uh, A little bit of a rough bit there. Tiger Woods has not taken to the course yet. As a matter of fact, he still hasn't even hit the practice uh, practice, uh, round or practice uh, tee boxes or greens at this point. He will tee off today uh, much much later on at 354 so he's got a ways to go like another hour and a half like he's already digested lunch yeah and he's trying to (laughs) figure things out but tiger going into this again has made 24 consecutive cuts last year made the cut moved into saturday and then you know back hurts arms hurt it was raining i mean last year's masters was miserable uh, but still managed to just kind of slog his way and, and make his way into that third round. So he did make the cut in the two prior years for Tiger Woods. And again, by all accounts right now, and everything that you've heard him on the practice grounds, he was like the, one of the first ones to show up at Augusta this year. Everyone says, man, Tiger looks buff. Like, he looks geeked, and yeah. he's 100 right he's now. He's been working on himself. Yeah, truly. So after last year's having to, you know, DQ himself, step off, withdraw. Sorry, not DQ, but withdraw. He was not disqualified. He withdrew from the event. The two years prior to that, he was in the 30s. Finished, I believe, 38th or 36th. I can't remember. It was 36 and 38, back-to-back years. Uh, the car crash year, and then uh, he had won the Masters. Like yeah. He's not that far removed from his fifth green jacket. Nope. But for Tiger Woods to roll into this thing, and for him to do the things that we all want him to do. He is trying to chase excellence, right? He would love a six-green jacket to hang with the other ones, to show off to his teenage son, you know, that still has memories of his last green jacket, that, listen, you can do this too. Because his teenage son, Charlie, is a budding PGA Tour, maybe not PGA Tour right now, but professional golfer. Like, it's very clear he's following in his father's very large footsteps. Yes. And to where Tiger Woods, on the golf course, has maintained... An aura of excellence so much to about his play, of which he has not started yet at the Masters, about what he thinks he can accomplish this year. What do you feel like you're capable of doing this week? What do you believe that you can do this week? If everything comes together, I think I can get one more. Uh, Want to describe that any more than that? Or <laughs> <we're good. laughs> and if you listened really closely to that, and I didn't pick it up on it the first time I heard it, but this time I heard it. After he said that, someone kind of chuckled in the background. Yes, they did. And then there was a little bit later of a laugh after he said, okay, do I need to make it any more plain? But there was an initial kind of ha, ha, ha. Right. Like this kind of uncomfortable kind of like, are we all to believe that Tiger Woods is going to run it back one more time at the Masters? Now, far be it for me to say he can't do it, but I think there needs to be an adjustment, at least in our mindsets, about how we think Tiger Woods is going to perform because if you look at it just in terms of just general human body and age, there are only so many things you can do to get yourself prepared for larger events. Like I think the comparison would be like getting married for just the average person out there, right? We all want to look nice in the photos. So we're all trying to, I don't know, just, you know, make the hair look right. Maybe, you know, pump a few extra weights just to make the arms look a little bit bigger. Right. You know, you get the uh, uh, the French nails, right? <laughs> yeah. you, you, you do all the things to make yourself look good yeah. in preparation for the big day. It's, I would assume, very similar for Tiger Woods to go out. 
lift weights, take a lot of practice shots, make some runbacks on the green. Oh, by the way, I am Tiger Woods, so I have a whole other side of me where I've got to promote this brand new of uh, clothing line that I've got going because my business life upended itself while I was trying to get myself together yeah. to where I'm trying to push this Sunday red brand mm-hmm. that he has out there now. And as he does all these things, and as you get older, and we are all getting older, to those of you I'm speaking to in this precise age range, where Tiger Woods is, right? He is in his late 40s. The Champions Tour begins at 50. Right. Like it's not like it's not like 50 is not the new 40 in the PGA Tour. 50 is the Champions Tour. That yeah. is the new bit that you get into. You can still play on the PGA Tour because you have a truckload of wins. Like Tiger Woods has a truckload of wins. There's no doubt about it. But even he has to admit, and I think this is where I'm coming from, because I think he even gets it, because he was asked, how you feeling, Tiger? I hurt every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, is, yes. Is I, 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 I ache. No, I, I ache every day. And um, I, I prefer it warm and humid and hot. And uh, I know we're getting some thunderstorms, so at least it'll be hot. It won't be like last year. No, it won't be like last year, because I think he will try his darndest not to have to withdraw himself from a tournament. Oh, yeah, you know that hurt him to have to do that. He does not want to have to do that again. But you know what hurt him? It hurt him to say that he does hurt. Yes. And that's an admittance of like, listen, I am not the spring chicken that I was when I was throwing my fist in the air, Mm -hmm. chipping in from the bunker. Or immortal. (laughs) Right. I feel pain. I'm not the same tiger that was hugging my dad after major win after major win after major win i am the dad Mm -hmm. i am the dad now and with the dad comes the dad bod and he has had five back surgeries five that's a lot and And the dude was in a car crash (laughs) right like you said you've been in fender benders i've been in fender benders even just those i've had like slight injuries from that I couldn't imagine rolling your car. That's a whole different level. And so he's had to go through the physical therapy of trying to fight back from that while trying to play the competitive golf and the championship golf that even he wants to play. There's no doubt about it that he wants to be at that level. But for those of us who have the memories, who remind ourselves of what Tiger Woods was as a majors champion, whether it's the Masters that's going on today and this weekend, whether it was the U.S. Open or the Open, it is not the Tiger that you are going to see today. There may be glimpses of it, and there may be uh, some long stretches of it for sure. But I think as a golf-watching public, and whether you're a casual golf watcher, whether you just immerse yourself into this game, that Tiger Woods, at his peak was Tiger Woods, like, incomparable. There was nothing else that held the standard to it. We all wanted it to be like Sergio Garcia, right? We all wanted it to hold up to that standard. And then we have to look even further back to go look at guys that like Jack Nicholas and Gary Player and even Greg Norman to an extent to where they were playing such high-level championship golf that there were no comparisons. The Sam Sneeds of the world, the Jack Nicholas's of the world, the Gary Players of the world, the Lee Westwoods of the world, those are part of an era that no longer exists. And Tiger Woods is trying his darndest, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for it, to not become an era of the past. But even he recognizes, and he just said it himself, he hurts every day. I'm curious, too, because I know he says that he likes the heat and he likes humidity, but you know... Those aches and pains when there's storms coming through, those joints are a little creaky. They, like, hurt a little more. So now I'm curious if that's going to be an issue for him today. And he, again, they pushed the start back because of the weather there. So he's going to be playing golf right up until sunset and maybe have to get up tomorrow morning to finish the round and then go right back out there again. Now, we're not expecting, like, thunderstorms and heat and humidity and whatnot, but he'll have to deal with the wind. But Tiger is Tiger. Like, he can manage to get around some of those things. But I think for all of us, again, as golf fans, casual or hardcore, to see Tiger Woods today, you're going to see probably a little bit more Eldrick Tiger Woods than you're going to see Tiger Woods. And you can hang on to those mems. For sure. The memes of Tiger Woods pumping his fist and wearing the Nike swoosh and the red on Sundays that we were all used to and making the confident walk it's up fun. the green, mm-hmm. it's fun. It's it's great. It's wonderful to think back on. I just want us all to understand 
that the Tiger Woods of then is not the Tiger Woods of today, and he even gets that too. Yeah. And that's a struggle, I think, for a lot of people to wrap their heads around. But hey, all the more all the more better to lean in and root for and root for the guy. He's not the anti hero. He's not. For some people he is. There's no doubt about it. He's polarizing for some of the things that he has done in his past. Again, trying to separate the athlete from the person can sometimes be difficult. We all understand that. But as a golfer, Tiger Woods. All right, folks. Mock draft season is upon us. And if you heard earlier in the hour, I was talking about why I don't think the Panthers should get too crazy about stockpiling late-round picks. We'll explain coming up. Adam Goldschild rolls on. Going beyond the box scores, Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. April is Fair Housing Month, and North Carolina's 56,000 realtors proudly honor our commitment to ensure everyone gets a fair chance in today's housing market. From the country crossroads to urban centers, realtors across North Carolina are working to open doors to anyone who is striving to attain the American dream of owning their own home. We believe fairness is worth fighting for because that's who we are. Paid for by North Carolina Realtors. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Adam Gold here, and right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you make your first $5 wager because you know me. FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up. FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up. Then you can bet on anything. Slap shots, home runs, slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. $200 in bonus bets await when you place your first $5 wager. Visit FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to get started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Bonuses issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.com. The Body Armor State Games are coming to Charlotte this June. Registration is open to athletes of all ages and skill levels in 25 different sports. The Body Armor State Games features 13,000 athletes and 700 teams. Don't miss out on North Carolina's largest sports festival of the year. Visit BodyArmorStateGames.org today. The Body Armor State Games are proud to partner with Truist, Harris Teeter, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Trust ACT construction equipment and banded wood chippers and stump grinders to position your tree service for success. ACT construction equipment is your authorized dealer for sales, service, parts, and rentals for bandit wood chippers and stump grinders. ACT Construction Equipment has been your authorized dealer for bandit equipment for over 10 years. Visit one of our six North and South Carolina locations or actce.com for more details on bandit wood chippers and stump grinders. ACT Construction Equipment, always the right equipment for the job. Healthcare.gov is here for you when life happens. If you lost your health coverage because of turning 26, going off Medicaid, leaving your job, or moving, you could be eligible to enroll in new coverage now. And if you need to update your coverage because of marriage or having a baby, you could also be eligible. But don't wait. There's a limited time to enroll. Check your eligibility at healthcare.gov today. Life happens. Get covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It's the first day of the first grade, and she found a new best friend. It's a laid-back Sunday afternoon, you wish would never end. The homemade taste of Bluebell, and good friends gathered round. The good old days are being made right now. St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream, a cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days are being made Look for Blue Bell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. This is 
is Adam Gold. Anti-vax, anti-sax. Who's going to say no to that on the campaign trail? You can put that on a bumper sticker. You can slap that on the podium when Aaron Rodgers is at the campaign rally. You're not going to be a football player for the Jets and be on the ticket and campaign. You can't Uh, do both. The Adam Gold Show. This banger here on a Thursday. Oh, it is. Digging it. I love it. Paul Eihander in for Adam Gold today. Victoria is here on the ones and the twos. This is Paul Russell with the banger. His name's Paul, too. There you go. (laughs) All the Pauls. Yes. All the Paul things. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, everybody. Uh, Ryan Fox still leading the Masters right now, five under through ten. Uh, Eric Von Ruyen has gone bogey-bogey, so he has slipped back to minus two. Bryson DeChambeau now two shots back at minus three. There are 20 players under par right now, still with a lot of field uh, to take uh, to take to the Augusta course so far. Uh, Will Zalatoris is still one under par. Uh, for those of you following Wake Forest, North Carolina's Akshay Badia. He will tee off towards the top of the hour. Wake Forest University alum Cameron Young at 3.42 today and Tiger Woods closer to 4 o'clock. So for those of you listening in real time right now, that is what you are looking at. Again, it's uh, Ryan Fox 5 under through 10. All right, it is mock draft season. We are two weeks away from the NFL draft. Uh, Right now, the three that I've pulled up uh, most recently are all crapshoots at this point. When you look at the amount of talent that is available, certainly on the offensive side of the ball, where most people would say Marvin Harrison Jr. of Ohio State, the wide receiver, is is the offensive player, but really the needs, again, in the NFL, because we are a quarterback-driven league at the top of the table, there are really four quarterbacks. I think the good news is for Carolina's Drake May, who declared for the NFL draft and finds himself at least mostly in the good graces. I'll talk about that in a second. Mostly in the good graces of scouts that he finds himself in the top three. Interestingly enough, so let's lay this out for you here. I just And I just pulled three at random, but, you know, three of the, most pop, three of the more popular ones, Mel Kuyper Jr., obviously one of those guys, uh, Mel Kuyper. And this is about all of Carolina, like first-round picks too. So we're going to focus on the first round here. Drake May would fall to New England. At number three, I say fall in the nicest sense. Top three quarterbacks, and again, there are four because J.J. McCarthy has entered the chat from Michigan. Caleb Williams of USC, Jaden Daniels of LSU, the Heisman Trophy winner. So Drake May, three to New England. It seems like he's always been set in that spot, right? If you look at every mock draft on the planet, it always seems that they're going to put Drake May in that spot. Now we roll to CBS Sports. CBS Sports, and one of their many drafts, there's like 52 guys that do mock drafts for CBS, but the one that I picked out here, and by the way, Mel Kuyper, again, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, step too far past, there's a need at center as well, and the top center seems to be Graham Barton of Duke, who would go in at number 20 to Pittsburgh. That's where they got him, and that wouldn't be a bad spot for him because he'd be snapping the ball at least for one season to Russell Wilson or Justin Fields. If the Wilson experiment doesn't work out, Justin Fields is there, and now you have a young center quarterback combination. All right, CBS. Drake May, not to New England at number three, but number two to the Washington Commanders. Now we're getting interesting. I've, I've captured Victoria's attention just a little bit here. Right. <laughs> so Drake May to Washington at number two. Graham Barton, the Duke center, again, the top center available, 24 to Dallas of which we heard earlier in the hour, Dallas should be more focused on a quarterback trying to figure out the heir apparent to Dak Prescott. I'm not quite sure I agree with that one, but hey, who am I to criticize? Oh, wait, I'm Paul. Yes! So, Drake May, 2 to Washington. This is now Bleacher Report. Bleacher Report, again, Drake May, Kuiper, 3 to New England. CBS, Drake May, 2 to Washington. Drake May, Bleacher Report, number 1 to Chicago. Interesting. And Graham Barton of Duke, number 20 to Pittsburgh. So Drake May now in three different drafts. Again, we are in mock draft season. One week or two weeks out from the NFL draft's first round, of which Drake May will be a first-round pick. Let's call it that right now. He is now in three different spots from three different mock draft places. All three have different reasons for the reasons why they slide to where they're going to be. Mel Kuyper's is as simple. Chicago's locked in on Caleb Williams. Everyone seems to be thinking he's going there. Drake May to Washington seems like a better fit. 
for what Washington's trying to do. And he gets to stay relatively close to home. Yeah. Drake May to Chicago with number one Bleacher Report because Drake May, and this is as old school as old school can get, is the prototype NFL quarterback. Yeah. He's got height. He can move around in the pocket. And he can make the passes. Mm -hmm. And there's some acumen there. It's as simple as that for Drake May. Now, you would believe that everyone is in his corner. Not so fast, my friends. Mm -mm. Merrill Hodge, in an interview, and I don't have the audio, unfortunately. Merrill Hodge, former NFL player, did uh, a lot of analyst work for ESPN, was on a Minneapolis radio station, WCCO, and Merrill Hodge said, quote, Drake May is the kind of player that will get you fired. Ooh. Especially if you draft him in the top five or top three, he's going to get you fired. Comparing May to Malik Willis of the Tennessee Titans, saying Willis is the only guy I can think of that is as erratic as May. Wow. And basically saying because of the performance that he had against State and against State against Carolina at at Carter Finley was a right. mess for the Tar Heels. It was. That was Basura, for those of you who speak Spanish. Uh <laughs> But to compare him to Malik Willis of the Titans, Malik Willis of the Titans got outplayed by Devin, uh, Devin Leary. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm having a tough time swallowing that one. Yeah, I don't like that at all. I don't think that – and plus, that's not a fair uh, comparison either when you're talking about Drake May in that game with NC State because that's also a rivalry. Like – and. Fluky things happen in rivalries. So, yeah, I mean, and that's one of the things that people have talked about. Drake May is not polished, but that's okay. He's in college. Like, this is why if you're smart with how you do drafts, maybe you have an older veteran QB that he goes on that team with and helps shape him to be more polished. But to say that he's going to get you fired, wow. Before the proof is even in the pudding, and by the way, I misspoke about Devin Leary. I meant Will Levis. Will Levis in Tennessee. Oh, um, yeah, banana yeah. pill eater. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mayonnaise coffee guy. Yes, I meant Will Levis. I did not mean Devin Leary. I apologize. Uh, that was just a complete brain thing on my part. But for Hodge to come out and suggest that May will get you fired before he even takes the field, yet I have every mock drafter out there going, he will totally work in all these offenses when you work with him. It, it, it does feel like in a monster outlier. It feels like there is recency bias because he picked on the one game specifically. Yes. And that the body of work for Drake May clearly is much more powerful. Because if you're thinking about guys that have suddenly increased themselves in terms of draft value, you immediately go J.J. McCarthy, right? Mm-hmm. Because of Michigan. Because, let's be honest, if I, had, if I had Jim Harbaugh in my corner talking about how great I was, yeah, and I just got done coaching him, I'd be like, yes, this guy's fantastic. He has a winning record. He does all the right things and whatnot. But then I go to Carolina, and I go, the litany of quarterbacks that have come out of Carolina, they are playing in the NFL. Yeah. Most recently, Sam Howell, who was starting for the Commanders. Now, it's an experiment that did not work. Clearly, pivoting to Drake May just means yet another Carolina quarterback in the huddle. But it doesn't mean that guy's going to get you fired. No. Sam Howell did not get anybody fired. And there were so many times where Drake May elevated that team, too, that, you know, I mean, you have to look at the team as a whole and what he's done. And, yeah, it's probably, I mean, it could just be mock mock draft drama. That's what this (laughs) sounds like. (laughs) Caleb Williams played in a pro-style system at USC. Jaden Daniels at LSU, you know, clearly outplayed everybody. He put up a ton of numbers. And I remember when Daniels was at Arizona State, too, and he was special as a freshman. He was mobile and had a quarterback. Drake May took advantage of the weapons that he had. Mm -hmm. Tez Walker, up until a few weeks ago, was like a first-round pick. He's still going to be picked high in the NFL draft. Omari and Hampton was a hell of a running back for him. Like, Omari Hampton's like the only guy left with the heels right now. Yes. But he had the weapons. North Carolina still did great things. Again, I'm not sure if it's fair to say that Carolina was going to contend for a national championship or an ACC championship based on just the ACC and how it operates. And maybe that's part of the issue, too, is like, well, he didn't lead him to a championship. Well, championships are pretty special. Let's call it what it is. And Florida State saw what happens when they lost just one guy in Jordan Travis when it came to championships. Exactly. And we can run down that road all we want with the ACC and blah, 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 blah. But that's a really strong statement to say about saying that it's going to get that May is going to get somebody fired. May's not going to get anybody fired. No. Well, He's not. Not in Chicago. 
Certainly not in Washington and definitely not in New England. No, especially not in Chicago. They do enough stuff that would get other people fired for other reasons. <laughs> not I, drafting Drake May. I think that's a monster, monster. Hot uh, take. That's a weird hot take. For to pin it, I, just, I bring that up just because of just the kind of season that we are in and that we are shooting a little bit from the hip when it comes to just rolling the dice and yeah. taking our chances on what people think and what people want to believe. Oh, and it changes every day, too, because Drake May was like, just last week, he was like number five, projected to be like the fifth quarterback when he was number two for the longest time. So, yeah, it'll change next week, too. You're a Carolina Panthers fan. Totally understand that. Ooh, I've jumped yeah. on the bandwagon, and I understand what's going on, especially with the, the, the upheaval in the regime, so to speak, with Dan Morgan now as the GM. Dave Canales is the head coach, and I've given Dan Morgan more than enough flowers about the offseason moves. They're they're not playing to lose. They're not playing to rebuild. Yeah. But I want to give them a hot piece of advice here about what I've been seeing. And there's been this discussion about teams trading up and trading around, especially into the first round, trying to stockpile picks and trying to figure things out. And we know the Carolina Panthers have the first pick in the second round. Right, it is number one, which is essentially the second first rounder that you have. It's 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 a first round pick because everybody will want to move into it based on the players that slide for whatever ridiculous reason slide out of the first round, or the teams that all of a sudden find themselves looking at their draft board going, "We must have that." And so, Morgan and the Panthers will be taking phone calls, and they should they should take every phone call possible. But the phone call I don't want them to take is from a team, and granted, the Panthers have two picks. So the Panthers have two picks in the in the second round. The phone call, because of the Brian Burns trade, the phone call I don't want them taking is, hey, move, there's, there's two of them, actually. Don't move up from your two to get into the first round. It's not worth it. It's not worth it's it. It's never, it's rarely, I don't, I don't want to say never, but it's rarely worth it. You're not going to get high enough to get the guy that you really, really want. And based on the needs of this team, especially as we talk about wide receiver and cornerback, you're going to find that person in the second round. So that's the first call I don't want. It. Don't make it. Don't make it. So Dan Morgan, don't make that call. The call I don't want you to take is the call to get your pick, that top pick, have you slide down just a little bit, and then they offer you nothing but scattered picks in the rest of the draft. Fifth rounders. six rounders. I don't want that. Nobody wants that. There are no... The, the track record of hitting on a Hall of Famer in the fifth or sixth round is almost like infinite. Like, you draw the symbol, right? It's the sideways eight. Yes. Draw that symbol. It is infinite. I don't need any more fifth rounders or sixth rounders. You don't need those picks to stockpile a training camp roster. You're not going to find a lot of gems there. You might find a hustle player that you could stash on the practice squad, but that's not what you need. You need guys. You need the dogs. Yes. The dogs that impact you immediately. I don't want give me your give me your second rounder that's not going to slide me too far and give me your second rounder next year. And if I want to get draft day greedy, give me the second rounder after that because I know you want that guy. Yeah. So ask for your price. I don't need fifth and sixth rounders. Get those higher draft picks. That's where you need to stock up because I can get all the fifth and sixth and seventh round guys. Guess what? There's a spring football league. There is. And there's a lot of hungry dogs there that want to play in the NFL. And it won't cost you picks. No. Get your higher round get get those high round picks. That's the call you can take. If you if you got someone that's going to do you twos but not a, a 2 and a 5 this year or a 2 <laughs> and a 6, I don't want 6. I don't want fives. I don't no. need those. I don't need those. Are we draft kickers and punters? Exactly. Great. Do that. Get those guys. Get the dogs that you want. But I can get a lot of dogs in the UFL right now. Guys that are hungry that want to play in the league. Yes. That will help you out. And as a Panther fan, I desperately want them to make smarter decisions and choices when it comes to drafts because this is what they do. They make dumb draft moves, and then we're paying for it for years after, <laughs> like this one. <laughs> well, hopefully Dan Morgan yes. will take my advice. And if he wants to pick up the phone and call me, I'm happy, happy to have this conversation with him. And I will, I will slap his hand if he says, well, what about if it's a two and a four? No. Yes, No. I'll break out my dad's Morgan's jersey, too. And we'll do this together. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Happy we got love, okay? We can conference call on this one, Victoria. <laughs> yes. You know, we'll conference Tag call team. on this one. Yes, for sure. All right, folks, I want to rewind just a little bit earlier on in the program. Uh, we put uh, we talked a little bit of women's college hoops, a lot of movement in the ACC, certainly in the transfer portal, ACC and ESPN college basketball analyst Kelly Gramlich. I want to put a bow on the 
college basketball seasons, specifically on the women's side, because of the ratings, of the interest. Uh, college basketball fans in general have found themselves gravitating more and more to the game. Certainly a lot of that has to do with the rise and uh, of just the exposure, more than the popularity. I think women's college basketball has always been popular, but I think the exposure has been amazing this year. And as soon as we close one door on college basketball, the professional season rolls right around a week later. But let's grab the bow first of all. Joining us here on the Adam Gold Show is a good friend of mine, ESPN and ACC Network college basketball analyst, Kelly Gramlich. Kelly, thanks for pulling some time out of your day today. And I have argued in the past couple of days on my show in Raleigh that I think the ACC got cheated a little bit by the fact that Tara Vanderveer decided to retire before she joined the ACC. Oh, for sure. Uh, that was a little disappointing to hear yesterday. Tara's a legend um, and, and one of the greatest of all time, one of the greatest coaches of all time, three national championships, over 1,200 wins. There was a little part of me that thought, look, she's been in the Pac-12 her whole career. She's on the tail end of her career. She's losing Cam Brink to the WNBA draft. Is she going to want to travel to Winston-Salem on a Thursday night? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> so I did have that in the back of my mind, but, you know, she hadn't said anything, and so we really weren't sure. But So it kind of makes sense when you look at it from that perspective. She did have a quote saying, you know, part of me wanted to stay and, and compete in the ACC because it is the best women's basketball conference in the country, but I think it was probably just time for her, and so I understand it. I totally get it, but you're right definitely a bummer as for me personally too as someone who covers the ACC Stanford Cal SMU the newest members of the ACC coming next year trying to put a bow on this past season with us here Kelly and it, it clearly again it's been more about the exposure about the women's game this season than more before and uh, I just got done talking about golf creating unicorns and whatnot and how they're having the challenges with the more exposure of the women's game the unicorns have kind of come to the front to where it's almost unfair to call a lot of these players obviously Caitlin Clark is is the prime example Angel Reese had a lot of that love last year but but you just remember, you just mentioned you just mentioned Cam Brink. We have you know J.C. Sheldon out of Ohio State, uh, Alyssa Peely of Utah, uh, Aaliyah Edwards at UConn, right? I mean, the, this list goes on and on and on to where more and more these women are becoming household names and are able to turn that into you know not just exposure for the sport, but all of a sudden they find themselves being the newest and maybe freshest ambassadors to maybe take the professional game in the United States to a new level. Yes, they do. And there, there's a lot of big names entering the WNBA this class. I mean, you could argue this is the biggest class and kind of the, the, the class with the most star power that we've ever seen. Um, I go back to, I believe it was 2013 when you had Griner, um, Elena Deladon, and Skylar Diggins. That was a really big class. But this one, I think with Caitlin Clark, it, it's going to be unparalleled, you know, I, and we talk, I know you were mentioning it with, with golf and the whole drama with golf on, constantly is who's the next tiger, right? Who's the next tiger. And there, there will probably never be another tiger, but for women's basketball, I think Caitlin Clark is the tiger in, in a lot of respects. Um, she's someone who's going to take the sport to new heights, heights that we've never seen before. She's a winner. She's phenomenal. Um, she plays the game in a different way. Like, I, I think it's a, it's a fair comparison. And then you're seeing the ratings, right? Golf really took off from a ratings perspective once Tiger started doing his thing. And we're seeing ratings that are just flat out unbelievable. To go from 5 million people watching the national title two years ago to this year, 18.7 million, it's, it's just hard to fathom. And, yes, part of it is, just the growth of the game and the exposure. And I totally agree with you on that. But part of it is Caitlin Clark and she's just, she's un unreal. Um, and I think you're, we're going to see ratings records broken in the W as well. And it will be because the sport is growing and all that, but it will also be because of Caitlin Clark. ACC Network college basketball analyst Kelly Gramlick joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. I am Paul Eihander. As we put a little bit of a bow on the college basketball season, we saw Kenny Brooks at Virginia Tech, specifically to the ACC, leave to go to Kentucky. Megan Duffy slides into the Virginia Tech spot. Kenny Brooks was willing to go to Kentucky, but it seems like on the men's side, no one seems to want that job, at least initially. <laughs> what, what is the issue with Kentucky? Why did Kenny Brooks say yes, but why is Scott Drew saying no? 
That's a great question. You know, I think for Kenny Brooks, and I, I know Kenny well, and I think the world of him, I think what he did at Virginia Tech is remarkable. Um, I think he just kind of wanted a new challenge. And in women's basketball specifically, you know, we talk about this with football and with men's basketball of who has the NIL, that kind of thing. Well, even your middle-of-the-pack NIL funds for football and men's basketball are still pretty high. Your middle-of-the-pack NIL funds for women's basketball compared to your top NIL funds, there's a big difference. And so I, I believe, I don't know for sure, but I believe – he was going to have more NIL money at Kentucky. Um, and, of course, Liz Kitley was graduating and moving on, who has built that program with him. Georgia Amor followed him. So I think that's part of it. And then Kentucky just built a brand-new women's-only basketball facility, which is going to be very exciting. Seems like there's a lot of money being put in there. So I think there was, a lot of it was about money and resources. When it comes to the men's side, I view the Kentucky men's job kind of similarly to the Tennessee women's job which Tennessee, um, from the reporting I've seen, their top three candidates all turned them down. Because at Tennessee, you get fired for going to the Sweet 16. Right. At Kentucky, you know, you get fired for, I know they lost in the first round, but you get fired for really good seasons. So I think that's part of it. And then you're also seeing coaches who have been able to carve out success at a certain spot that are just happy there. I mean, I think we've, we've all come to realize that if you have the support of the administration and you have adequate funds you know maybe making a million more dollars just isn't really worth it especially in this climate so there's a lot going into it but i i think the tennessee women's situation if you want to look at it through that lens it's kind of similar to the kentucky men acc network college basketball analyst also for espn kelly gramlich joining us here on the adam gold show i want to ask you about what's happening with the transfer portal clearly it's it's always going to be something that will have to crop up especially in the offseason moving forward and certainly with NIL opportunities that you just mentioned. At North Carolina, Courtney Banghart has lost roughly half of her team. If you have her ear right now and you can grab her by the ear, what do you need to tell her to get things going again? Oh, man. Well, I I wouldn't tell anybody how to do their job in this transfer portal <laughs> era because it seems awful, frankly. I mean, just to go back to your example, we had Calipari – take the Arkansas job and he said I met with the team there is no team which is just crazy I mean that you know it used to be you you took a new job and you had a roster maybe it wasn't the talent level you wanted because you're trying to rebuild but you at least had players and I think what we're seeing with UNC you know you had some people that had some injuries that I think when you've been injured multiple times you're probably not happy where you are just because of that mainly Um, So you had a player like Paulina Paris leave and go to Arizona and some other players like that, a a key who'd been injured her whole career, basically. The Deja Kelly, Alyssa Usby, um, and Usby's not in the portal. I I think Usby will come back. Haven't heard that announced, but I think she will. And then Deja Kelly in the portal. I think we're just seeing that, right? We're seeing, okay, I've spent four years here. I would be going pro in any other situation, but because I have this COVID year, maybe I'll take a look around and see what's out there. I can very much understand that. A few of the other ones, you know, I think you're just going to have some attrition. But, yeah, it does seem to be an issue. And UNC, I thought they really underachieved this year. They are so talented. I thought that roster was so talented. And forever, for whatever reason, I don't know, you know, about the internal workings, but I felt like they underachieved. And so maybe some players just looking for a fresh start. But I know she's bringing in a good class. She's been recruiting like crazy. I guess the main thing I would tell her would be make sure you keep Alyssa Usby and do your best to keep Deja Kelly. That I, that would be my advice, but I, I'm sure she doesn't need my advice. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about coaching in this transfer portal world. Well, I asked, and you answered, and I appreciate that. ACC <laughs> Network College Basketball Analyst Kelly Gramlich. Kelly, before I let you go, uh, Wes Moore and the uh, Wolfpack women, their chances of running it back next year, uh, sweet, si- sweet 16 and deeper. Um, sweet 16, I, I would say a good chance, you know, because they bring back Tanaya Rivers and Isaiah James, who I think will end up being one of the best backcourts in the country next season. It really depends what they do um, inside. I know they have some young post players they're excited about. They also bring in Zam Jones, who's a big time McDonald's All American, but she's a guard. So, how can they replenish their front court, losing Baldwin and Mimi Collins? They have the guard play, but they just need, and they don't necessarily need superstars in that inside but they need some solid post players so whether that's their young players or the portal but if they get that then definitely i think nc state 
bare minimum, their expectations every year should be the Sweet 16 with the program that Westmore has built. And then if you get hot and you get a good draw, you have what happened this year with the Final Four. But just so impressed with Westmore and what he's built there at NC State. Um, and I'm glad he's staying at NC State. I thought perhaps Tennessee was going to come calling and, and maybe talk to him, but sounds like he is good to go to stay in Raleigh, and I think that's good news for everybody. Kelly, appreciate the insight as always. Uh, have a, a great spring. Enjoy a little bit of the time off, even though, you know, it really never ends, does it? No, it doesn't. But thanks, guys. Appreciate it. ACC and ESPN College Basketball Analyst Kelly Gramlich uh, earlier here on the Adam Gold Show. also want to thank NC State Guard and graduate DJ Horn uh, with joining us earlier in the program as well, talking about his life and his intentions after playing college basketball for the Wolf Pack. So there you have it, right? It's been a fun day. Thank you, Victoria. Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Adam Gold here from.